I'm saying to myself, well, you know, if only someone would just make it just this way, then my life would be a little easier. Somebody ought to make it, you know, just like that. And then I realized, I said to myself, uh, well, wait a minute, you know, if somebody does make it, I'm going to be pretty mad at myself because that means I thought of this and I didn't even do it myself. This is episode 146 with Eric and Janelle Resch of Piranha Pool Products. Enjoy! Welcome to your go-to podcast for the pool and spa industry. My name is Tyler Rasmussen. And my name is Greg Diafania. And this is the Pool Chasers Podcast. All right. Well, thank you both so much for making the trip all the way from Temecula. Is that right? Temecula. Beautiful Temecula. (laughs) What part of Temecula are you guys in? Well, (laughs) Temecula is uh, not that big, so we're (laughs) kind of smack dab in the middle. (laughs) Yeah. Is there a lot of pools in Temecula? Oh, yeah. Yeah? There Mm -hmm. are now. Yeah, when we first moved there, weren't there weren't very many. And in fact, our route was up in Orange County, and uh, so we're about an hour south of that. And when we moved out there. I thought, oh, you know, I'll just get some pools out here, and there weren't a whole lot of pools to get back then, <laughs> and there weren't a lot of homes. I think the population was like eleven, maybe twelve thousand when we moved out there. Yeah, mm. that was about nineteen ninety two. Yeah, mm-hmm. there's yeah. like a lot of extreme sports athletes that live in Temecula. Yeah. My aunt lives in the hills. Got a beautiful house up there with my uncle and just seeing like a uh, motocross yeah. like ramps oh, yeah. and jumps and i'm like Lots who the hell lives up here <laughs> but yeah, yeah it's a, it's an interesting area because there's definitely like a suburb feel yeah. mm-hmm. on one side like maybe the east side of uh, whatever that freeway is and then yeah, kind of 15. the west side of the 15 is more kind of spread out yeah if you will. yeah it's uh based around the wineries when we moved there there was like two wineries i think and now there's like 30 Maybe 40 wineries. Yeah. <laughs> That's a big draw, actually. Yeah, it's a real big draw. Yeah. So mm. that made a lot of people also, it was very inexpensive in the 90s to move there. So uh, it just really grew from there. Very good. You yeah. Are you both uh, like wine enthusiasts? What do you call those kind of people? <clears throat> well. <laughs> wine kind of sour. <laughs> kind of sour. <laughs> I, I, Wino. <laughs> Mad Duck 2020. Yeah. For that. yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm just sobering up right now. Um, yeah, I'm I'm not really a, a wine enthusiast. <laughs> I'm terrified of wine. Like yeah. I feel like that is a <laughs> weird thing to get into because people are just so smart about it. But I'm like, yeah, uh, but better, I'm not gonna act like I know what I'm talking about. They're faking about here. it. Yeah. They're yeah. faking it when they're it, swirling, yeah. swirling their glass around, you yeah. know, and then smelling, smelling it. it. I I don't yeah. understand. <laughs> this tastes like grape juice. Yeah. <laughs> Well, luckily, I don't think a lot of people in the pool industry drink wine either. Beer people. <laughs> I like beer much better. Give Plus, even, Heineken, even the little tastings you get at the winery, those, I, I'm drunk after, you know, five of those. <laughs> it's like an instant hangover. If I have, like, yeah. a glass of wine, which has been a while, I have, like, an instant headache. Like, you, you just yeah. you drink it too fast. I'm like... I, they kind of make it taste. You guys gave me the 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 cheap the stuff that tastes wine. really good. Like, and I'm kind of thirsty, so it's like I'm drinking right. this juice here. Anyway, we'll move on from that. Yeah. Um, so, talk to us a little bit about how you got into the pool industry. Did you know you had a pool service company? But did that all start in Temecula as well? No, we're from uh, L.A. County, so we actually grew up in the same neighborhood. Diamond Bar, for those out there who know where it's at. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you know where Diamond Bar is? Mm -hmm. Dude, everybody that lived in the high desert when we graduated high school, everybody was running down to Diamond Bar to whatever that country club was. (laughs) Yeah. uh, Yeah, yeah, yeah. To go party. So, yeah, we grew grew up, or I grew up in the high desert and we graduated high school in the high desert. Oh, okay. Oh, man. Pretty familiar with that. (laughs) And when we were kids, it was Diamond Bar. There was just like (laughs) nothing, nothing to do. So, um, but in the meantime, then uh, we wound up. Well, I went to school at Cal State Fullerton down there, just down the freeway. Mm-hmm. And then after that, uh, I kind of didn't know what I wanted to do. I graduated, and I hadn't even really thought further than that. My brother uh, had a pool route, and he said, hey, you know what? Um, I've got a friend that will give you a full-time job down at a warehouse uh, in Santa Ana. And it turned out to be a PWP warehouse, uh, PWP Santa Ana, and it was Pat Bledsoe down there. And mm-hmm. a lot of people... Uh, may know a pat he's a total kick in the pants <laughs> and so uh he wound up uh he was managing that store and then he hired me on full time so i worked counter 
uh, at Pool Water Products, and I did that for about a year. Got to know a lot of the guys that were coming in because I'm, you know, selling on their stuff. And it kind of hit a point where it's like, you know what, I think maybe I should start my own business. And my, I, my brother kind of pushed me to do that, too. I uh, had never, th- ever, never thought of owning my own business, uh, but thought, you know, maybe this would be a, a good change. And so I wound up picking up a route. There was a guy that came in all the time, and he had a route for sale. Well, he said he had a route for sale. <laughs> um, and his name was <laughs> his name was Alan, and this guy was a character. He uh, he said, "Yeah, I'll get you set up." And uh, so I bought a route off him. He didn't even have one single pool when he sold it to me, not one. What? He just ran <laughs> ads. He he made me. I can't wait. I can't wait to, <laughs> yeah. I can't wait to hear that. Is, that the hell? It was a screaming deal. He he. Uh, I think I got it for like seven and a half times the monthly, um, which back then I think seemed reasonable. It kind of has all gone up since then. But it's like I'm, I'm going to fully train you. Uh, we're going to run a bunch of ads. You'll know how to do acid washes, all kinds of repairs. I'm even going to give you tools, everything. I was like, how could I say no? So that's exactly what happened. He said, all right, um, let's get going here. And so uh, I wound up stopping at Pool Water. And uh, he ran a whole bunch of ads for like bottom of the barrel pricing for acid washes. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> and he oh. and he pushed all the repairs. So we would go somewhere. I can't remember the name of his business. I don't know if you remember. I don't remember. Now. 99 cents or less. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> so we well, got the real dollar menu here. Well, well, he did the marketing kind of like that. We He literally had an ambulance that he had converted, and that's what we, we drove an around ambulance? all over. Oh, man, this story gets better. Like, <laughs> did the lights work? You, uh, you know, it's funny. I learned, yeah. It did, but he had to change it to amber. He couldn't have the red one. Right, anymore. right. Yeah, right. So. We're coming to clean your pool. Yeah. But it was a pool emergency. I swear, it was the, like old Ghostbusters ambulance, though. So, oh, I mean, it awesome. was that old school kind of big, I don't know, it was like a GMC or what it was. But he had everything in there. So we're <laughs> driving around an ambulance, uh, you know, showing up people's <laughs> homes, saying, oh, yeah, you got a problem we, with your pool. We perform CPR, too. <laughs> 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 but um, so we'd get in and he'd be like, OK, we'll do the acid wash. And oh, look, that's kind of needs to be fixed over there. And so does that. And so in the end, you know, it'd be enough to where I learned a lot uh, in 30 days of riding with him. And we did all kinds of repairs. And after that 30 days, I had 32 accounts. Oh, wow. <laughs> it's, uh, it's like, there's your route, buddy. So, <laughs> so it, was, uh, it was kind of a funny way to get started. So. Dude, my head's going crazy right now because I just picture you <laughs> like jumping out of this thing looking like an EMT or a doctor or <laughs> something a like that. With a stethoscope. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> the latex glove just quatch. <laughs> <laughs> what seems to be the problem here? <laughs> Face. You look a little green. The homeowner goes perfectly white. You just <laughs> <laughs> Is my pool going to be okay? <laughs> Turn around. I've never, I've never lost a pool. Not on my watch. <laughs> oh, that is crazy. So was that all happening in Orange County? You said you were That's in all Santa Orange Anna? County, yeah. So actually a lot of that, the whole route turned out to be in uh, kind of Anaheim Hills, if you know the area, your Belinda. Yeah. Mm. Some in Orange, but it pretty much all kind of wound up that way. Um, That's and pretty spread out. Your Belinda yeah. to... Yeah, if you're, after a while, you know how the routes go. After a while, you kind of refine it, sell some off here and there. And, I mean, technically, and it's not that far, but I know what the traffic's like yeah, on the 91. <laughs> your, your Belinda off the exactly. 91, yeah. going into Irvine. Oh, yeah, that 91's a nightmare. I commuted that for years after we moved down to Temecula. But, yeah, we, but you know, we were on side streets and stuff, so we kind of would do a loop around the valley there. And uh, maybe start in Brea and go down your Belinda Boulevard and come around and go up, out through like Anaheim Hills and a little bit of Santa Ana too. And so it was. Day. I don't know if you could do that anymore. <sighs> yeah, Not I don't anymore. think so. There's a lot more congestion going on because yeah. mm-hmm. I remember. I mean, it's a little fuzzy, but I did grow up kind of in that area. My grandparents lived in Santa Ana and oh, things no like way. that. Spent a lot of time when I got older at the block and stuff like that. When Vans had the skate park there and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, but. It didn't seem like it seemed congested, but nowhere near what it has been the last five or 10 years. Like, it just seems like totally insane in every direction. I'm like, it's a good thing people are moving out. Like, it still won't be normal there in terms of how many people are out and about because it's still always going to be tourist destination and, you know, all that stuff. But, man, it's 
it's pretty wild. It we is. did get it really refined though, to where he could clean a oh, pool yeah. and then drop his equipment over the fence to the neighbor, and we like just kind of go. Row, up. Yeah. There you yeah. go. <laughs> or parked a truck truck once on a cul-de-sac and do five, and so a lot of referrals. You know, you could. Yeah. You kind of had to because some of those neighborhoods, like. You guys familiar with like Bellflower and Lakewood? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we so, know that. <laughs> that's where a lot of my family, really, like, two three generations of Mayfair. Same here. Really? Bellflower. Mm-hmm. Bellflower. Hmm. High. Yeah. yeah. My uncle played there and went on to play in the NFL. Played football for uh, Bellflower High. Wow. My yeah. mother and father both graduated from Bellflower High. Really? My, but oh, this my is grandma George went to Bellflower High. high. <laughs> Wait a second. Explains a lot. Wait a second. George, my dad. Used, used to be Sharon. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! I feel like I'm gonna have to do a podcast yeah, uh, to, uh, to get for people to understand. Uh, she's, awesome. Real, yeah. she's awesome. She's <laughs> awesome. So how did you how did you kind of develop the route from there? Well, uh, that's a that's an interesting story, and it's kind of a fun one because then uh, I had my route, and we were dating, and then we got married, and then. Uh, so it's like, man, we better push this route, like, got to make this thing grow now, you know. And so it worked out well as far as uh, how to get accounts. I would literally, <laughs> I'd pull up and park and start cleaning a pool, and Janelle would get out of the out of the uh, truck, throw the baby in the stroller, and start walking and knocking on doors. And back then, you know, there's no Google Maps or nothing, so we're looking for, like, backwash valves. I'd just be listening walking up the street uh, for the equipment yeah uh you know to figure out who ha- who had a pool no way yeah that well because awesome. what happened is his brother had a route and it was very successful in the yorba linda anaheim area and uh he didn't have a family so he'd get he had you know money where he he would get these mailers and he would mail out like a thousand of them and he'd say maybe you get like five responses you know but it could be five pools and i'm thinking because we had a small family, I was like, we don't have money to do that, you know? So I've got to think like, what can I do next? And I thought, well, gosh, if I just knock on people's doors with a cute kid, I was going to say that yeah, baby the is a is nice touch. Yeah. 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 Oh yeah, that For is sure. a great touch. Yeah. Yeah. Actually, I stole that? a baby. I'm going to borrow one. <laughs> <laughs> we um, didn't have no. Look how it was, sad it was he is. Just, he, he just, little baby just wants, a, wants another pool for the route. <laughs> Can I clean your pool? I need to feed him today. <laughs> so yeah, we'll clean for food. Right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah I just listened to see what, you know, who had equipment. And boy, people would invite me in and they'd be like, yeah, I just, uh, I, I'm real disappointed with how our pool's being cleaned. So I'm like, well, I'll go get my husband. And uh, and we'd go in the backyard, and boom, we'd have an account. And we just, I think one summer, we got like 20 accounts that way. And one, just in like three weeks. And yeah. I got a lot of exercise. Yeah. That's incredible. <laughs> yeah. But who's opening the door? It's the middle of the day, maybe in the morning. Um, and a mom with a baby knocks on the door, and a mom with a baby opens the door. Right. You know, and so, yep. so it's like, oh, forget the pool. Come on in. Let's talk. And so, oh, yeah, pool service, give us a quote. So um, she would come around the corner. I see her. She's all, I got another one over here. So it was, <laughs> it's like, but she's the queen of sales. So I don't know if I'm not at all surprised. Dude, that's awesome. Yeah, you went with all the variable speed pumps out there. You wouldn't be able to do that so easily now. these days. Yeah. But. It was the backwash valve. For some reason, they were, the trap was up in the front on, on this, especially this one track in Yorba Linda. But it's pretty common in the older homes. The trap's in the front, so you can see this backwash valve sticking up under the pl- out of the planter under the mm-hmm. front window. Mm-hmm. So we're just driving around. I said, okay, there's one, there's one. So I kind of showed her what to look for. You see a pole with a net, you know, on the side of the house and uh, or, or what to listen for. So she'd just start walking and pushing the pushing that stroller and kept getting accounts. That's got to be one of the coolest <laughs> stories you've heard about. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know Building what? You do what out. you got to do. You oh, do what yeah. you got to do. Yeah. Yeah. And that's, was that's it hustling. pretty common back then for people to have i mean this is probably what 90s or 90 yeah, to be mid early yeah yeah early mid 90s i've never asked this question before but how common was pool service at that time because uh, now it's kind of like somewhat of a given when yeah. a pool is being built that you'll have some type of service i know there's still I a lot of people well, you do, made right? me feel uh, really old with that question <laughs> <laughs> 
<laughs> we well, are, it's not we like I was old. like, so what was this back like, like early 60s? <laughs> In the 1800s. At least we were born. <laughs> no. I, I think it was a luxury back then, but because we were in the Yorba Linda, Anaheim Hills area. They could afford the luxuries. Uh, yeah. yeah, they, they had the, 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 yeah. the luxury, yeah. Nice. So how did you get to a point? I mean, I want to know a little bit more about the pool service company. Yeah. Like you're starting to build this up. I mean, how successful did you get it before figuring out that you needed to uh, kind of build some equipment to make things better, easier? You know, it's funny. I, I don't think I was that intentional with it. I think it's just like, how many accounts can we get? How can I refine this? Uh, okay, Janelle just got us a bunch of accounts on two streets over here. So I'll sell those ones down in Santa Ana. Uh, and then I'll just kind of focus more on Yorba Linda. So it was a bit of a transition into a, kind of a more concentrated route. And as we were going, well, here's another piece of the story. Can't wait for this one. Yeah. So if you're familiar with uh, the 91 freeway, it's the only way to get from like Riverside County or the Corona area into Orange County on the north side. There's no other way to get there. You can't even take a side street because it goes through the Santa Ana Canyon. Mm. And so not only are 10 million people going in and out on that freeway each day, which is uh, worse now than ever, um, all the Santa Ana winds also blow through that same exact canyon. They just rip through there. So here I was building a route in the probably the windiest part of Orange County, North Orange County there. And uh, to top it off, the other beautiful thing about that area is they have about a billion eucalyptus trees, I would say. I kind of mm. stopped counting. But it's, I mean, it, we're talking eucalyptus leaves everywhere, especially Villa Park and some of the areas where the neighborhoods are all nestled in with trees around them. And then, of course, the pools have eucalyptus leaves and, and other things in them like, almost constantly. So needless to say, I'm sitting here scooping leaves out of pools and uh, just kind of doing my best and trying to, you know, it was my imagination just sort of thinking, man, I didn't get that leaf. If it was only this way, then I could probably get all these leaves a little more easier if the tool was just this way or that way. And so I'm starting to see in my mind, uh, maybe it's because I, I don't know, took a bunch of art classes in school or something. I'm starting to imagine different ways you could make the shapes of these, uh, of the plastic on the, on the net or something like that. And finally, I'm saying to myself, well, you know, if only someone would just make it just this way then my life would be a little easier man somebody ought to somebody ought to make it you know just like that and then I realized I said to myself uh well wait a minute you know if somebody does make it I'm going to be pretty mad at myself because that means I thought of this and I didn't even do it myself so I, I thought about it for months really and I, and I kind of had it in my mind I went home and I told Janelle I said hey uh you know what, I kind of invented a whole different way that I want to change some of the parts on this uh, on these nets, and I want to start making them. And she said, well, that's just great, but you're not doing anything until I find a patent attorney. So uh, <laughs> she well, I say that conversation had to be an interesting <laughs> one, for sure. Well, <laughs> Thank uh, God for Janelle, man. Yeah, yeah right. Anybody else would be just like, give us, yeah, yeah go make for that. it. Yeah. <laughs> well... And I remember when he, he bought the route and, um, you know, the ambulance guy uh, gave him the tools. And he came home and he was he was like, gosh, you know, I, I could probably get a lot more done, but I kind of feel like I'm cleaning pools with toys, mm. you know. Um, I just – so we went to a distributor, a local distributor in the area, and we were like, you know, we thought maybe he gave us, like, not the best tools, you know. And so uh, – so we were like, we, you know, do you have anything better than this? And and they didn't. And so um, he was like, gosh, I could just do a lot more if I could just, you know, have have more ease in, in the cleaning. And then the other thing too is he he was a bear in the backyard. I mean, he just would get in the backyard. He he'd open the side fence with the the pole and the net and all the <laughs> stuff in the net, and he'd just, you know, shove the gate open and go in and then throw it all down on the ground so we were always breaking tools constantly mm. uh so i like i like what you said though because i think a lot of people need to pay attention to that is that you first kind of went to the distribution or wherever it may be where you buy supplies and just asked first before investing money into some project oh yeah thinking that you don't know because i think for anybody that's thinking about developing a 
product at any given time that do your due diligence, especially in 2021, there's a lot of entrepreneurs, there's a lot of people mm -hmm. um, trying to make things. Oh, yeah. So like go online, if there is a place, especially in the pool industry, go in there and say, this is what I'm trying to accomplish. Do you have anything that would be better for this? Because they very well, you know, might have something in there. So oh, I think yeah. that was a, a really cool thing because you very well could have, you know, invested this time and money into something mm -hmm. that was like, and you pay for a patent that's very expensive. Yeah. And it's like, why'd you do all that? We got, we got these. Yeah. yeah. And I really thought, you know, we really thought, well, they have to have uh, something better. But it was, uh, you know, mid 90s. And uh, things, from what I re realize looking back now in the pool industry, things had not changed so much from the 60s really to the maybe late 90s is when a lot of real innovation started happening. Right. So, you know, it just kind of was an open door for us there. Well, yeah, because we, um, it's kind of funny because then when we moved to Temecula, you know, it was the only place we could really afford to buy a house that was kind of in the region there still within shot of my business uh, in Orange County. So I was commuting and there wasn't as much traffic on the 91 back then, but it was still pretty bad. In the meantime, then uh, other people had done the same thing. That's how Temecula grew. A lot of young families moved out there. So we <laughs> probably bought one of the smallest houses ever made. And uh, our neighbors on one side were um, you know, uh, carpenters and on the other side had a mechanic, uh, had guys in construction. And they're all like walking out, you know, and they're getting in their trucks. We we're all kind of getting in our trucks same time in the morning uh, uh, and driving off. And they're going off with like DeWalt, Milwaukee and all kinds of really awesome tools in their trucks. <laughs> and I'm showing, you know, I'm going out with these things that like like toys. Um, <laughs> and the nets were, the, the, you know, a net was like 11 bucks. Mm -hmm. And it's, it was, it looked like 11 bucks, you know, and, and uh, so... Um, so they would break, and, and there was like no real thought behind them. Um, the best thing out on the time at the time that was the old days of like a, an Aquapro, which is I think defunct now. I don't know if you guys have been around long enough to remember those. Nope. And they <laughs> they uh, they had a, kind of some plastic parts on the neck, and they would break. And then actually the best there was a real the uh, Purity had a had a nice net out at the time, and uh, so they they had that one out. I would use that. But other than that, it's like our, our tools would just break. So you could buy a net, and then within three weeks, you broke it. It's like, oh, got to get another one. And that just didn't make sense. So was there maybe, because this is something that we feel pretty passionate about. Was there like a lack of pride of what you do, like almost embarrassed to be in this space? Because I'm not going to lie, I felt that way because I... I didn't mm -hmm. like the other industries, like if you were an electrician or something like that, like you could find photos online and you can see work trucks look a certain way. They dress a certain way. They've got millions of tools. And I feel like there's, you could have a lot more sense of pride in actually looking and feeling like you're a part of a trade. And I feel like we have come a long way, but that is something that we still all need to strive to perfecting the way that our vehicles um look because that you want to take pride you want to walk out in the morning at five six in the morning and look at your vehicle and it's just set up perfectly and everything has its place and you've got and there's tools that are made for this specifically not just taken from every other industry i think you're right and i think it was kind of sort of an emerging industry at the time the service side uh, people did it. I know that when I grew up, there was a guy down the street that was a pool man. I remember always seeing stuff in his truck. But I mean, you know, you got to remember that it, well, it wasn't long before I was in that people were hauling around like glass chlorine bottles and, you know, glass uh, test kits and stuff like that, like test tubes. Oh, like the, <laughs> like the old, La, like the old Lamont old ones, ones we used to see. Yeah. 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 yeah it like, be like wood. in the wood boxes. Yeah. 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 Plastic, forget that. We're going with wood, you know. So easy with that, man. <laughs> Glass. Don't get it wet, right? It's gonna warp. So, um, and and I, and I'm not gonna put myself that far back in time because I, I like to think I'm not that old. But when I was a kid, that's the kind of stuff he would have had in his truck. Um, and so, it. I don't think anybody really understood what could be done with the pool industry. And I think you're 100 percent right. The idea that you would uh, even wrap your truck or have a logo. I mean, th as far as we'd get back then would be just like the magnetic sign, you know. Yeah, that's all we had. 
throw it on the side of the truck and some you know sometimes you forget it and after a while you may or may not even take it off or put it back on um, but I, don't, I think it's also come a long way where you can make more of a career out of it too I think the actual business part of it has been refined quite a bit uh, I think it was kind of tongue-in-cheek in the past um, and maybe that's just my own shoot from the hip approach to things uh, from years ago but uh, that would make me think that but I don't seem to remember it being as I don't know that any other way to say it. Maybe it wasn't as professionalized as a trade as it is now. Mm-hmm. Well, Definitely. yeah, because I would look at the, our neighbors who work, uh, you know, into construction, and they had maybe like a union or something. It was it was more like a, prof- a real professional type of atmosphere, whereas the pool industry in those days, we didn't have that. You know, you'd just see another poolman out there. You'd be like you know, <laughs> waving. But then I'm sure IPSA was already in place, but it, it wasn't like you, you really knew about it. And that really helped when we became IPSA members and we got into the, I think it was the North, North Orange County, North chapter, Orange County chapter. And then you felt like, you know, wow, I'm part of a I'm part of something and part of a organization and, and, and we're in the pool industry. And, it, and, and like Eric said, it was emerging at that time, and it was just really growing, and, and now it's, you know, completely different. But, you know, in the beginning, it, 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 it was that way. And it's funny because we are talking about tools as well. We're going to get more into that. But you think about, and I, I guess I never thought about it till now, but you look at a landscaper – and there's so many of them out there and i think they do a really good job of organizing their rakes and shovels yeah. and their mm-hmm. picks and lawnmowers and all those things those are all things that you would find in your garage or mm-hmm. whatever but somehow you can look at all those things that you might have and because it's organized and it's like done in a professional manner you're kind of more likely to like some respect and maybe take a picture of the side of the vehicle and contact them for landscaping services or something like that. But we take, man, if you're in the pool business, we take care of so many things that we really need to do a better job of highlighting. Mm -hmm. Like you should go down the road and be proud that you have these chemicals and highlight, you know, all the hazmat, you know, icons on the vehicle saying that, you know, this is pretty much almost like a bomb here. Like, be careful. (laughs) But I'm just saying, like, when you look at most pool vehicles, it just looks like you wouldn't know what kind of responsibility or what kind of professional that is. There's so many things that you're responsible for in a backyard. Like, we should be highlighting that on the regular. You know what I mean? Yeah. Absolutely. And then I think, you know, the interesting thing is, unlike a lawn, you want it to grow and be green. I mean, the pool is exact opposite. You want it to not grow and not be green so you know there's kind of this uh continuous effort to keep it in a certain state and uh, it takes chemistry and knowledge and 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 effort and that's what terrifies the homeowner most is that oh my gosh i saw there's a little bit of green on the wall there and (laughs) and uh so um there is an element of pride to it that i think first of all has come a long way um and i think a part of that too is because you can actually um make a nice living for yourself with this type of business and get a lot of the perks of being a, uh, you know, a business owner and kind of a lot of the freedom with your schedule and things like mm-hmm. that. But I think even now it's been refined further. I mean, people drive around in, in beautiful trucks and rightly so. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's all part of now presenting themselves as businesses. It's almost like, I think it seems like they've even in this industry, we've kind of learned how to market it as a lifestyle too. Like your pool, your lifestyle, I'm going to show up, I'm going to keep that pool clean, you're going to be happy, you're going to be out swimming with your family this weekend. It, it seems like the, the, we finally crossed a number of hurdles that other businesses might have crossed years ago uh, as far as marketing it and refining it. I think that's probably the, the, the biggest and best thing to come from this golden age of entrepreneur yeah. is that there's people from other industries like myself as a marketer looked at this and said dude well, like eight years ago i was like dude pool industry is like lame you know what i mean <laughs> like i just looked at it and i was like dude i'm like how is no co- there's like no manufacturers no companies nobody doing anything cool nothing lifestyle nothing at all so that being like kind of the dawn of just you know everybody being an entrepreneur you look at other industries much differently where i might have been into harley's and 
you know, doing snowboarding and skateboarding and things like that. But you, as you get older, you think, well, those things are like, everybody's that's oversaturated. Everybody's made that cool already. Like, how do you go somewhere else and do something? And I think a lot of smart people are doing that in other industries where they're like, I need to like learn that craft and then I'm going to send it in a new direction. Yeah. Um, and I think that there's a lot of people that have gone from other industries into pool service, building pools, different things like that, mm-hmm. where they're kind of bringing in, you know, a different sort of edge. Yeah, I I do respect that and like that a lot about just kind of the golden age of all these entrepreneurs. Oh, sure. I love it. Yeah, and doing the shows, you know, we go to a lot of trade shows. And back when we first started, there were not as many. And so... You know, the pool industry wasn't, obviously wasn't what it is today. Just in the last 10 years, you know, going across the country and, you know, it was pretty standard. You would hear, oh, I have, you know, 50 pools or 80 pools. But now I'm talking to people who have like 4,000 pools. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, you have 4,000 pools that are like, yeah, I have 60 trucks. And I'm just going, wow. I mean, that's incredible. So how many pools would that be? Let's see. Yeah. <laughs> and and what, if, what if somebody quit? How many pools do you right. have to do? I'm going to get you on our monthly plan. Yeah. You'll be getting uh, 10 new pools, nets every But that's week. so common that I hear that now They're at the enormous, shows. Yeah. Enormous uh, routes. And it's just, I, I just smile. I'm like, wow, that is something else to come that far never expected anybody to have that many pools on a route but it takes awesome. a whole nother level of like business management yeah you know, that's that's what to your point like people coming in from outside of the industry because managing 80 pools managing even 200 is not too difficult but past 200 yeah. you're talking about a lot of people management sounds like a nightmare <laughs> well, also yeah. we did yeah. it <laughs> Service, yeah. <laughs> what but, was really interesting too in the 90s is uh, there was an economic fallout, mm. and that was about 92. So, what we started seeing a lot of people come from the aerospace mm-hmm. engineering uh, become pool men. And it was like, hey, what did, what, do you, what did you do before this? And it was like, oh, I was an aerospace engineer. <laughs> I'm like, wow. And you, you know, you're cleaning pools now. And they're like, yeah, and you know what? I probably won't go back won't go back to engineering this is you know cleaning pools is great Hmm. friend of ours yeah you guys had that big boeing then they had that they used to i think they just demoed it but you had the big boeing facility there was tons of aerospace engineers that worked there yeah Yeah. and it even one uh, one of our friends in aerospace dan he's uh he says man he's all i just want to be out in shorts and in the sun he's all you know i can do I, i did all the other stuff and he just he's all i just want a completely different type of lifestyle uh, to be working and and uh, and just out, you know, meeting with people and you know, doing working with my hands and stuff. Um, but you know, what's interesting is uh, you're right. I I know in the shows we've met people that came out of um, other lines of work. Uh, one in particular, I remember meeting at Long Beach. Uh, he was like a finance guy or something and, and a marketing guy, and he came into the business and then he was uh, uh, creating routes real fast through some kind of marketing strategies that he had thought of and uh turning around and selling them so that kind of in- innovation you got to think probably came from many different ag- angles and many different industries that people wound up now applying it in here so i think you nailed it a lot of innovation came from other places and then was applied in the pool industry and i think for the better you know yeah, yeah. totally mm-hmm. advanced it we need more of it keep on yeah. keep on coming <laughs> we need a lot more innovation in this business don't let any of us um be stagnant for too long right Right. everybody got it we have to keep going we're going to take a quick break but when we get back we will talk about taking your tools seriously and eric and janelle will discuss the development of the first smart net prototype the journey that it took to get into their first distributor and how patents work this episode of the pool chasers podcast is supported by skimmer yo did you see that skimmer added a tagging feature i sure did could you imagine the things we could have done with that when we were running brothers yeah it would have been a real game changer for us It provides a capability to get organized, which you know I love very much. (laughs) Oh, yes, I know. I mean, it could show weekly, bi-weekly, or seasonal customers, which will help with the routing side for sure. But you know where it would be most helpful is keeping track of what type of equipment a customer has when you were doing your initial bids. For sure. I can mark whether they have a single-speed pump, automation, or heater, 
And when it's time to run our specials or heater season comes around, we could have easily seen which customers fit best into that category and sent them information through MailChimp. Yeah, that would have saved us hours and hours of time and would have been much more effective, I think. Most definitely. If you're interested in the tagging feature or all the other great features Skimmer offers, check out the show notes below or visit GetSkimmer.com. That's GetSkimmer.com. Back to the tools, you know, and you having crappy tools. I think that's a pretty good point because I remember when we, we always took it very serious as brothers because I, when I cleaned windows prior to going into pools uh, and I had a boss who had gave us like a bucket with crappy equipment. And I'm like, this can't be, I mean, we're cleaning multi-million dollar homes. And I had the same kind of thought process. There was, this cannot be the tools that are used on these high rise buildings <laughs> and these like, and I've seen window cleaners. And I'm like, so then I did my own research and that industry is actually very progressed. So I'm like, oh, well then I had like a hip bucket and all this other cool stuff. And I'm like, that's, this is what she should have been buying us, right? If you want us to do these high end work, like yeah. we should have this high end equipment. Yep. And so when we ran brothers, it was always really important to us for our guys. Like if you want something like, just let us know, like, this is what we think. And Piranha was part of that. This is what we think is the best equipment. And okay. they always had Piranha net, but you know, we, if you guys want something or need something, or you have an idea that you want a different piece of equipment, like just let us know. And we always had different guys ask for things and we'd try to, you know, if we could afford it, we, which most of the time we could, then we would allow them to use the tools they wanted. But that's, it's such a different, it changes your job so much when you have the quality tools to do it. I mean, that was one of, that's one of my favorite stories that you tell because just because your boss provided you that you didn't like <laughs> care. You just like, well, what's going to make my life better, easier, right. all of the above. I'll go get my own shit. I did. And <laughs> that's what's going to happen. Like anybody listening to it, it's like, Oh, but you know, my boss, my company doesn't provide, you know, prana, whatever. Who gives a shit? Go buy your own. Yeah. yeah. Like Cause you, you're going to work slower all day as a result and not wanting yeah. to spend 30 bucks on a good Correct. tool. Yeah. No yeah. way. Oh, that's what smart people do. Yeah. It's oh, like yeah, you're going to be more efficient and you're going to look like a boss. You, man, this guy's got upper management written all over him. He's just <laughs> taking charge. Oh, yeah. Any boss person. or any real good boss is going to like that you bought your own equipment. Like, oh, this guy really takes it serious. They're going to love what it. What is it? Even if something costs <laughs> yeah. 100 bucks, 200 bucks, like you do yeah. something 40 plus hours a week. Exactly. Like, it's yeah. that is nothing to make your life easier. Right. How much right. does that cost? And the other thing people don't understand is in when you're cleaning pools or you're, you're you know, you have your route, uh, you don't have banker's hours. So it's not like you go and it's nine to five. You're out there sometimes when the sun is coming up and you only have so many hours and you have to move fast yeah. because you have to get those pools clean. And if you want to grow your business and get more pools, you got to move really fast. So mm-hmm. Uh, you can't be bothered with, um, you know, oh, this is really hard to replace this or uh, your net breaks mid yeah. route or pull well, makes mid route. Yeah. And that was and the, the very point you're making, Janelle, is that it's, it's kind of like, OK, now I'm babysitting my nets because I know they're going to break. So I can't mm-hmm. really work with them. And then so my original thought was, you know, this thing should be indestructible. Because uh, the pool industry was it was wide open for innovation at that time. Because like Chanel had mentioned, nothing had changed for since we were little kids. I mean, you know, it's always I mean, I remember being a kid uh, and probably in like barely even in middle school, and we had a pool. I think I was in fourth grade. We had a pool put in, and the tools were the same when I was adults an adult cleaning it. Nothing really changed. So the first net was you know I was going for indestructible because. Uh, you know, I had to keep, you know, I, I thought I've got to work with this thing every day and I just, I want to really rely on it. And so I went for all, like all welded 304 stainless frame. Uh, and then when I say welded, it was welded to a, a stainless tube and just tried to make the most indestructible thing. So that was the so smart was all net. one unit. The all, it was all one unit. That was, a, that was the smart net, which is why uh, a lot of people know us as a smart company because it was, you could tell he was really sick of breaking nets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> For sure. Yeah. That's the strongest thing known to man. Yeah. <laughs> moon, moon rocks? Get it for me. I don't care how much it costs. <laughs> that was a beautiful net, too, because because it, the, the stainless had a nice kind of little give to it. It's not like a, a, a real rigid metal. You know, it's got, it's, it, can, it can flex a little bit. 
and then I got the shape of that down just beautifully and uh, and put the put our uh, patented little scooping lip on there. That was a beautiful item. The problem some, was the welding. <laughs> yeah, some people still have. Every now and then we'll cross paths with somebody. We recently saw somebody. I can't remember who it was. He's. I still got that, and I think he still uses it. He, he was putting another one of our plastic pieces on there. It's like you got to be kidding me. But it, it was. Um, it wasn't as indestructible as I thought because that little flex that it has allows it to just go back and forth. You know, as you're working all day long, and after like three, four months of that, it's wiggled and then doop, it'll snap. It's where the weld was because it got so when when you, they welded it, it would heat up it would change it a bit on that end. Mm. Uh, so was this the very first? These are the yeah. first very ones. first prototype. So the very first idea prototype was a pole, it but was, you wanted like a pole net combo. The no, very it was a net. It was a net. The first thing we ever made were nets. Oh, so you welded the net to another pole? No, to, the tube, to the tube, the little the, you know the little tube that has a button in it. Yeah. So that. So you bought the tube and you had that weld. I had somebody weld and I bet the frame and we had a welder like weld those, the ends of the frame to that little tube. And then we're sitting there drilling holes so you can put the little V clip button in it and a uh, lot of work on stainless, a lot of labor. <laughs> you know, you got burrs and all kinds of stuff. Then you got to polish it. And man, it was, it was a nightmare, the, the production side of that. Were you but doing that it, like in your garage or something? Oh yeah, we started at <laughs> we started in the you know well like I mentioned we, I think we had the smallest cracker box house known to man and uh, it literally had one kitchen drawer that's how small this it's like God did we, put we the, didn't know what we were doing did we put the silverware in there or the foil I don't know <laughs> <laughs> seriously we got room in the fridge put the silverware in the fridge <laughs> would you like a chilled uh, salad fork. <laughs> So we're we're in like this tiny little cracker box with a, you know two kids. It's like now we uh, have the service business, and it's like okay, now we got to start making nets, which I know absolutely nothing about. So we started in the garage and in the living room, and then kind of the living. <laughs> the there bedroom. wasn't really a living room. Yeah, it was, <laughs> yeah. It was, sort of everything just kind of spilled <laughs> into the next room because the next room was really part of the same room anyway. It was like one of those types of homes where it's. They made you think by changing the carpet to tile that you were in another room, you know. So <laughs> whatever the case, we had fabric all over because I, I was trying to, I rented some machines. I was trying to learn how to sew to the bags, uh, figure out what kind of thread to use. And, man, and you were I, trying to make something happen. <laughs> yeah, I was desperate, man. I got to make this He was really out. tired of breaking those nails. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. So, uh, so it Wait was. Wait a minute, what was the fabric for? For the net, for the bat, for the oh, oh, yeah, right. so, so like mesh netting. Mm -hmm. and stuff. The mesh netting had to f had to figure yeah. that out. And, and then I had my my mom. My mom was a seamstress, and she would sew beautiful dresses. Um, you know, she would make wedding dresses, and and so would uh, my aunt, her sister, and <laughs> we had them sewing mesh bags, and they're like pulling the fabric Destroy and they're like this fabric little... hurts <laughs> it would be <laughs> chewing up the sewing machines and oh, yeah. then we were like oh yeah we need industrial sewing machines <laughs> yeah oh yeah <laughs> so it's like well do we and get eric became a pretty good seamstress That's what right. industrial <laughs> sewing machine did you get because i am i'm a fan of sewing machines we had a um oh, it's a double needle oh, i think it's a br no we never i never was i was never able to get my hands on a double oh, needle okay. they were too expensive for us it was a... Um, if you're doing like some denim or something. It was not a Juki. It was a... Um, That's what Ledge had. Dude, they had like 20 of them. We went to visit Ledge. Really? Really? I was yeah. like, I was like, damn. But they're like the <laughs> umbrella material. Oh, yeah. And all that stuff. But those things are, oh, those are beautiful yeah. pieces of equipment. That's super reliable. Yeah. Oh, they're just workhorses. Oh, yeah. yeah. For sure. Ours were the older ones that... Uh, I can't remember the name of it now, but the same concept. But these were the older type of machine... So that a lot of these new ones are even more refined. So wound up, you know, I had one of those for a while, wound up, but, you know, in the trying to do stuff and assembly in the living room and then out in the garage bending metal and trying to build fixtures. And so I wound up having to make all the fixtures that we use after many, many attempts of different versions. And finally, it's funny, finally we uh, wound up getting into uh, Superior Anaheim. It was like the first distributor that we got into. That. Well, they also knew him as a as a pool man, so yeah. you know they were very helpful. 
Oh yeah, wow. I for you weren't known as the crazy inventor yet, or anything. <laughs> no, that <laughs> yeah, the that absent-minded guy. professor comes <laughs> later. Yeah. So um, there was a guy. I forget his last name. Older guy. I think he's since passed. He was super cool. His name was Bob. He managed uh, the Superior Anaheim, and I went in there because I was a regular customer, and you know, you know how that is. You get to, everybody gets to know each mm-hmm. other over the years. I was like, hey, Bob, um, I've been working on something. And I can't even pull them aside because I didn't know if I should tell anybody, you know. So it's like, uh, I've been working on something. Yeah, what do you got? I've been making some nets. Like, pool nets? Yeah. I was like, but I don't know a single thing about what to do. And I'd, I'd like to show them to you. And he literally, and I think you mentioned this this earlier, Greg, that's, that people contribute to the industry and that there's, you kind of mentioned an element of sort of helping people out as we go. And Bob was one of those guys. He's, he said, okay. I'll order from you. I'll give you a purchase order. I, I knew none of this, okay? We'll give you a purchase order. I was like, okay, what's a purchase order? And it's, <laughs> that That's tells awesome. us what we want <laughs> and has a part number on it and has a quantity. So he like showed me how it worked. And then he said, and then when you bring it, you've got to bill us. I said, okay, so how do I do that? And well, you don't just put the bill on the box now. You, you put a packing <laughs> slip in there. Well, what's a packing slip? I, literally, I knew nothing, and he walked me through the whole process. And then... Um, That's so awesome. Yeah, he was Even though if cool. it were me, I'd be like, dude, you need to cut me in on this. <laughs> <laughs> this one's going to cost you. Need, you're going to need some help. <laughs> yeah, he was Where's just... your wife at? <laughs> <laughs> but he, even we went down and met, Janelle and I met down, went down and met with him and the other uh, gentleman that was doing the purchasing, and... We sat down and looked at it. And so we show up with a net and the nets on the market, I mean, the most expensive net that you would buy if you were a pool man was 18 bucks. I I, I, th- I don't even think anybody paid 18 bucks for a net back then. Um, and so we showed up saying, well, we got to charge you, I think 30 for this thing. And they're like, 30 bucks? <laughs> it's like, well, look at it. It's all stainless. It's indestructible, you know, handmade. Uh, any other way we could promote Hand it? Forged. 30 for two? <laughs> two of them? Yeah. Three of them? <laughs> so, uh, so they said, all right. Um, then they they were like, you know, we, st- we were spent an hour or so with them. They're like, well, we're going to have to ask 45 bucks for this thing. <laughs> and I'm sitting here going, and I think Janelle's like probably thinking, oh, gosh, I should have just never let them do this but uh anyway we went for it put it up for you know 45 bucks no one even ever heard of a 45 dollar net i don't even know if there is one out there now and you got to think this is 1995 dollars okay right. so it was a it was it was an investment and they said okay we'll give you the purchase order and i think they always thought you know hey i know the smart thing is do dozens right everybody sells things in dozens so a case has 12 you know Trying, just trying to figure out from scratch. And so they said, we'll take four cases. So um, wow. we thought, wow, you know, so now it's like panic. I got to make 50 of these things, <laughs> you know, or 48. We got to find some welders. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and I remember they all first showed up and I, I went and pick, picked them up from the welder and they're back in the truck and they're all in rows, like stacked in there. I thought, gosh, it was amazing. It went completely out of my imagination, like total pretend fiction. And there's a case of them, and they're all shiny, and they're all exactly like the next one over. It was, like, super cool to see. I remember just kind of admiring them. And then, uh, of course, assembling them and trying to find a box. We didn't have any boxes. Um, some used old box. I drove it up there and, and handed it to Bob at, at uh, Anaheim. And he said, okay, well, we'll just put them on the wall over here. And, hey, and he, like, called a couple of counter guys. Hey, can we fix this? Let's change this display, and we'll hang them here, and we'll put one right there. And I tore out of there so fast, I was terrified. And this was, like, kind of pre-cell phone days. Not that we didn't have cell phones, but a lot of us didn't have them yet or couldn't afford them because you're paying 45 cents a minute. Right. Um, and every other thing they're getting you through uh, or getting you for. And so I just took off, and I thought, man, I'm so terrified. I didn't go back. I normally was there like three days a week because I'm getting my supplies. I have ordered them for like eight, nine days, <laughs> which, which was – I was terrified. And when I went back, I pulled into the parking lot, and I walked in, and they're like, where have you been? It's like, uh, I don't – what do you mean? It's like, we ran out of these the first day. And I, I, I was like, What? The $45 net, they ran out of them the first day. They said, we've been trying to find you. We didn't even know, even know how to get a hold of you. 
Like That's you have insane. got to be kidding me. So we became known, it, it became known as the $45 net. I mean, it's the smart net, S-M-A-R-T, save money and reduce time. That was the acronym, but it was, everybody just thought the $45 net. So Bob, then it's like, okay, we got to get some more for Bob here. So I brought him back some. What was the name of the company? Superior yeah. Pool Products. That was Superior. Or, I mean, the name of your company oh, then, oh. was it? We were it was... originally Smart Company, and we are still known by Smart Company uh, um, because of the acronym for the Stainless Net, which we don't even make anymore. So it's kind of funny. Uh, we're, we have a name that's now doesn't correspond to a single item we produce. Uh, <laughs> so I went back and I uh, um, brought Bob some more, and he's you know we're talking on the counter, and actually we went back in his office, um, and he said, "Watch this." I'm like, yeah, what? He's all, check this out. He picks up the phone. He calls up um, another branch because Superior was smaller back then. It was before uh, Pool Corp had taken over. Um, he calls up a branch. He says, hey, he's all, check this out, dude. I'm going to send you something. All right, talk to you later. Click. And then he picks up the phone, dials another number. Hey, dude, what's up? Yeah, this is Bob. I'm over at Anaheim. Dude, I'm sending you something. Get back to me on this. All right click and he went through and he called like several branches and um, sent them all my nets and just buried us we could we could it took us forever we to, to keep up with that they just started pushing our product through good old Bob pushed it through and then after that uh, people liked it other people wanted the indestructible net too I wasn't the only one and um, so um, so that one, that's kind of how it all just sort of launched. We quickly made it into some branches. Uh, one of them was out here and the others were in California. Just kind of at that point sort of took off. And again, just making only a one item and having a replacement part, having a lip and a bag as a replacement part, and that's it. And then uh, just kind of, of course, that put a real burden on the living room and the, <laughs> and the garage. <laughs> so... Uh, <laughs> We were uh, hiring neighborhood kids. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Get in here. Yeah. <laughs> so you were still making them all by hand at that, at that point? We were making them by hand, yeah, and had wow. to form them. And I, I don't know how to weld, so I had to find a welder. And then. And that's really hard yeah. because I, I, we didn't realize at the time that welding is really an art. And people who weld are very artistic. And we're asking them to do line production type labor. And boy, they <laughs> they were just like, I've done a hundred and something of these or, you know, however many. And they're like, I don't want to do another one because it's just, you know, the same thing, same thing. And yeah, I know a lot of like, uh, uh, like TIG welders that you used to know from working at the military base. And those, it's somebody that truly like understands what something is going to be used for. Mm -hmm. They know like it's weight capacity and what like angles like weld joints need to be made and yep. oh, there's yeah. so much to it like when you get somebody that's really good keep them close by but something i wanted to touch on because i was giving you a little bit of a hard time is that this was a totally different time like in the 90s mm -hmm. where i think we might take it for granted that if we have an idea or if we want to see what somebody else has done we can just google it or we can go on pinterest or we can do any of those things and that's cool that you maybe put your pride aside and ask the gentleman, uh, Bob at Superior, yeah. um, what is that? Can you help me with that? You know, and he was helping you out, but you were willing to, because I think uh, maybe all people, but I know for myself as being a man that sometimes it, it's not that easy asking for help. Right. Yeah. Um, but the fact that you just said, dude, this is for me and my family, like we're going to figure this out uh, no matter what and just made it happen I, I think that's super cool because that was a totally different time that wasn't you know the golden age of being an entrepreneur and mm -hmm. all this information out there you're kind of like i'm gonna do my own thing and trying to figure it out as you go so yeah. well, i never guys, looked, respect there i never looked at it like that but that kind of i think that's a piece of the puzzle because these days you can sit down and figure a lot of stuff out on your own it's almost too with, easy without another human being's help except for the fact that somebody posted something but i think maybe we were forced to network a little bit more back then um, and I hate using that word because networking makes me feel like I'm just looking to take advantage of other people, and that's not what I mean. Uh, I'll tell you, you want to know where, a, where a, the real help came from with my business, uh, starting the manufacturing? Uh, 
uh, was with the resources I found were my customers, my pool customers. Those guys were electricians and plumbers, and some guys were marketing people, and and uh, and uh, some of the women were doing different stuff. And I just kind of, I don't like to talk about stuff that I'm planning to do. I like to talk about stuff that I did. Because if you talk about what you're going to do, I think you kind of lose a little steam. You should just get stuff done and make it happen. And it's better to tell a past tense story, story here's what I did, rather than here's what I'm going to do. Because we've all heard a lot of people say that they're going to do stuff and it never happens. Nice. So I wasn't real comfortable telling everybody about what I was doing. But I did, as I got to know some people, share with them, hey, you know what, I'm kind of I'm kind of working on something over here. And then someone would say, really? Well, I know kind of a little bit about that. And next thing you know, that I had customers literally telling me, like I was trying to figure out pricing and things like that. And they would just say, look, sit down, man. I'm going to tell you how this works. And I had my pool customers like take an hour or two out of their day, just free of charge, just because we're friends, and say, this is how you overcome that hurdle. And somebody else would say, oh, this is how you overcome that hurdle. These are people that just out of the coolness of, of who they were, I think, uh, I think one of the, the myths about entrepreneurs is that they tend to be cutthroats. I think I find entrepreneurs tend to be very generous because they've discovered something and they like to see other people succeed too. Uh, and I felt uh, we received a lot of help from a lot of people. And even, even it's interesting, uh, there was one lady, I was doing her pool, probably the only vinyl pool in North Orange County, <laughs> in-ground uh, vinyl pool, real nice lady. I was cleaning her pool and I was out there one evening and she just came out to talk to me. And it was right after Janelle said, um, I'm going to find us an, you know, a patent attorney. We're not doing anything until we get a patent attorney. And so um, I don't know why I mentioned to her. I, she asked, like, what's going on? Because you get to know your customers as a pool man. You get, get to know a lot of them really well. And, and I think rightly so because they're feeding you. They're putting food on your table for your family. You know, I mean, these people are important to us. Mm -hmm. And so um, I remember uh, telling one lady, yeah, I'm working on something. I'm just trying to figure out, oh, yeah, what are you working on? Well, you know, I thought of a, I've, I've invented a, a, a tool and I'm just, you know, kind of trying to get over some hurdles. And um, I just, at this point, I, I don't want to do anything. She asked me some questions about like, you know, what am I going to do to protect it? Or well, I can't remember what it was, but I said, yeah, I need a patent attorney. She says, oh, well, I'm a paralegal for a patent attorney. <laughs> it's like <laughs> perfect timing, lady. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but she said, um, she said, um, the guy I work for is under contract. He can't do outside work, but I'm going to give you his number. I'm going to tell him that you're going to call him, and maybe he's got some advice for you. And so I called and talked to him, um, and he said to me, he said, you know what? He said, I can't do it. He said, but I do have one person I recommend. His name is Mark Holland. He's really good. He said, you know, with your patent attorney, you have to, you're going to be working regular, regularly with them. So you're, it needs to be somebody that you enjoy working with and that you, that you want to work with. So I wound up calling him. Actually, I think, were you the first to call? Mark? I think I was one of the first, yeah, I was first to call him. He's ever since, I mean, that was like, I think 1995. And to this day, he's, you know, not only a, a very good friend, but, you know, an integral part of the business when you're developing uh, products and um, so now everybody's going to be calling Mark Holland. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm sure <laughs> things have changed. I have to imagine the patent laws because I feel like there's a lot more things being patented now, and there's a lot of people copying other things. So, like a lot of people are not even patenting things anymore because people are just like, okay, like I just have to manipulate a product. Mm. X amount and we're good, right? Right. Sure, but it's not the right thing to do. I don't care. And that's actually not how it works. <laughs> how do either. I not yeah. go to jail well, and make this that, happen? That's not. <laughs> <laughs> or make it happen and go to jail. Yeah. <laughs> and that's how not, much time are we talking? <laughs> <laughs> and that's not how it works. But you're right. That's the idea that that people have. And what it is when you have a patent, you just have to be. Uh, first of all, you have to have a well-written patent. You have to, you know, cover a lot of bases in your patent. Um, but the other thing is you have to be willing to uh, fight for your intellectual property rights. So you're right. Somebody could come and change it, and you just have to be ready that you're not going to just say, oh, okay, well, you changed it. I'm, I'm just not going to, you know, pursue you. You have to, you know, follow through and pursue, and you have to 
you know, go that distance. And what, if you don't mind me asking, how many things have you had patented? Um, I is was. there like a variety of different things? Like, do you, is that kind of a normal part of the process when you make something is having it patented? Yeah, I mean, we like. Does everything it need is. a patent? I don't know. It doesn't, but it does offer you some sort of protection. Sure. I mean, you can go into a court system and say, hey, you know what, this person's coughing, um, and maybe, you know, they'll stop, or maybe you get into a lawsuit. I mean, you don't know. But, um, but when you're patenting, you're trying to say this has never been in the public domain, and so there's a ton, a, I mean, a ton of documentation that we went through on our products to, to really demonstrate that since the 50s and 60s, none of this has been done. I mean, just really making the effort. But I think to answer your question uh, kind of more specifically, no, people can make stuff that's just in the public domain. So like this chair or anything else, anybody could make that. But if you're bringing something new in uh, and you want a patent on it, then and that's your true intellectual property, then it's wise to get protection for it. I, w I would think too that it would help in not wasting so much time. I know that it's not cheap, but if you have somebody specifically setting out to make, like they would probably figure out if there's somebody else out there doing what you're doing and mm -hmm. you might not have caught it. You know what I mean? Right. Because I would imagine they're going to have access to a database that's not maybe as easy to figure out because there is so much stuff out there now that you might think that you've come up with the idea, but shit, you might want to type that in Google. You'll exactly. oh, that's a, that's yeah. that's kind of a starting point. Whereas once upon a time, it used to be uh, well, let's do a, a patent search. But now with um, now with Google and all the awareness that we have and the ease of access to all this information, then uh, that's part of the documentation process. You go through and you you pull it and you say, here's what I'm finding, and it's all part of you demonstrating that you actually uh, created something new. Yeah, and sometimes so. you do find out something that you had an idea for is already out there. Yeah. Uh, and, um, you know, that's a good thing. Then you don't spin your wheels trying to, you know, make yeah. something that's already out there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I don't leave. <laughs> this is <laughs> just, uh, this exists, but the patent's for sale, you know. Right. Because right. a, a lot of inventors, you know, they come up with ideas just so they can sell the patent or whatnot right. right but i feel like we could talk all day yeah. about oh, yeah. this yeah. specific topic we're going to take another quick break but when we get back eric and janelle will discuss the progression of the nets and how the pool industry was cheering them on to make the piranha nets come to fruition as well as how the twist scoop and flat lip came about this episode of the pool chasers podcast is brought to you by pentair pentair has a plan to keep your pools sparkling clean to do that they recommend using three layers for optimal sanitization Layer 1. Help kill the germs in the water by adding chlorine or a salt system. Layer 2. Neutralize the germs with UV light. Because the UV light plus salt or chlorine neutralizes harmful bacteria. And Layer 3. Automate your system with a water chemistry controller to monitor and adjust pH and sanitizer levels automatically. So to recap, Layer 1. Chlorine or salt. Layer 2. UV light. Layer 3. Manage with automation. All three layers equal a happy, clean pool. To learn more on what Pentair has to offer, visit Pentair.com or click the link below. So where, you know, you had the stainless steel version, where, how did the product progress from there? Well, it was breaking and this was killing us on warranties because, I mean, to make one of those nests was a tremendous amount of labor and stainless is not cheap and everything else associated with, you know, creating a replacement for a warranty is just a loss you know, on that unit. And if you get a lot of those, it's a lot of units. So uh, we kind of hit a point where I was telling Janelle, you know, I don't, I want to make the indestructible net. I'm trying to make it as strong as I can, but they keep breaking. And the only, she asked me, what's the, what are the alternatives out there? I said the other, the other alternatives are some of the, you know, just like to back to the aluminum thing. And she said, well, you're going to have to make it the best you can. And so that's how the piranha net was born because it came in and replaced the smart net. So I went through the effort of learning as much as I could about you know the different materials and things that we're using on that net. We put the piranha net out there uh, after uh, maybe a year or so of making smart nets and kind of sold them both together. And then the, then the steam, that stainless smart net just kind of phased out completely because no matter what we tried, whether it was not just welding, but maybe, maybe rivet the frame and get rid of the heat issue, that kind of uh, even didn't solve all of our problems. So 
uh, and the piranha net was turning it was coming along really really well so it's like okay I guess we got the we got the formula on this one let's just run with this and and we phased out the stainless net so that's what that's kind of how the piranha became and became what really product. helped us too was you know our customer base back then mm-hmm. because even though you know we put this out there the stainless steel and 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 it what we were getting some warranties we just had so many people uh, Pullman cheering us on you know like come yeah. on you can do it, you know, make something different. You know, there's got to be some way to make this, but, you know, just differently. And so it was... Because you were one of them. Yeah. Oh, definitely. I think that's different. Just kind of, I think that's why we've had the success we have because we are not like just somebody out of the blue started a podcast. Like we came from the bottom, you know, of starting a pool service company. And I think that's the same with... You, I know if we were like in your area, oh yeah, we'd be the biggest cheerleaders for, sure. for you guys. We're like, hell yeah, like dude, yeah. like if you make it that that you're spreading the good word exactly. to all of us that anything is possible. Like we're we're more than just pool guys. Like we can do other things. We can do both. You know, uh, sky's the limit. So yeah, like cool. Pullman would say, you know, it works great. I can, I I really love this thing, but you know, it it broke. So if you could just make this. And so it would last then you know so we really saw the need we felt the enthusiasm from you know other people in the industry and and it just kind of we just kind of were like we're gonna go with it big time but you know the thing is it's always been the number one goal I, this has to be the absolute best I can make it if I'm not if I'm not putting out the very best then I'm not gonna go home and you know sleep well at night knowing that at some point it's going to give somebody a problem and i've been on my route way too many times where i had something fail or a break and it's like geez i still have you know 11 pools to clean and then something failed on me and it was the only one i had i gotta run to you know distributor and get another one i just didn't want that it's got to be the the best i can make it and you're probably in the same boat i don't Mm -hmm. i mean with as me i I did the math you ever do the math on how many pools you've cleaned (laughs) gets a little (laughs) little amazing uh it's like if you add up how many per week uh times how many weeks and how many months and how many years i mean i'm all and i'm on the low side i think for a pool man i i've cleaned a pool i did the math it was like at least twenty five thousand times that's funny you said that because there's a scene from this show called the office i don't know if you guys are familiar with it but in yeah. his uh, like resume, he says, I'm, I've distributed, oh, you yeah. know, like 20, <laughs> bil- 20 billion, uh, you know, things or whatever. And he's like, 20 billion is like pieces of paper. <laughs> but I always thought that, that would be funny to like if you had, say, 100 or 200 pools and you times that by how many gallons each one is. <laughs> it's like I'm responsible that. for taking care of uh, 50 billion <laughs> gallons of water. 50 billion <laughs> gallons of water? <laughs> like the ocean. <laughs> Like, that'd be awesome. Like, customer would probably get a good chuckle. I mean, you got to pick the right person to do that with, but it'd be funny. That's so funny you mentioned, like, breaking something in the route because we, we use piranha nets. I remember one of our guys called me one day in the middle of his route and was like, hey, I just broke the piranha net. I was like, what? I'm like, how did you break the piranha? That doesn't ever happen, man. And he just told me how he did it, and I'm like, all right, well, I'll bring you another one. But I'm like, that – you're going to pay for the next one because those don't break. <laughs> <laughs> I do remember that. What, what happened? I don't know. Shane was, he was like pushing on a stair or something. And it, I think it snapped on the, the welding part. But I mean, I was like, this doesn't happen. He's <laughs> going to be our new tester. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> that, uh, so. But it was as mid route and I had to bring, we had to bring him another net, but it's just kind of. Oh boy, we got oh, a net. It wasn't very often. Oh. It we have some did. nets out in the truck. We're going to make up. Yeah. <laughs> I thought it was the pole. It was the net. It was a net. Yeah. I was like, damn, how did he break the pole? <laughs> no, somebody dropped the pole off a truck one time and we broke it. Hey. Oh yeah. yeah. <laughs> we get people that they'll say though, it fell off the truck, got run over twice and it still works. You know? <laughs> Like yeah. It's like yeah. right on. That's what we're shooting for. <laughs> that that one was a uh, an evolution of, as a product in itself because I mean just to get that thing to where it's at took a lot of refinement and a lot of effort. I had to change injection molds, like just even the, the red housing on that injection mold. That's the fifth version of that. So I mean, it's like like I said, I got. I mean, I want them to be good, and there's not going to be any any BS in anybody, and in, in, in this industry especially. Uh, not that I would even want to try. Uh, I just want to go out and make a good product. 
Uh, I have to be able to stand there at a trade show or, or in a conversation like this and say, I'm, I'm doing my best to make the very best product. There's always um, going to, you're always going to have some kind of problem because in manufacturing assembly lines exactly. and things like that, there's always going to be some kind of problem. But we always want to know, like, if there's a problem, I mean, I mean, I even have, uh, uh, you know, pool men call me and it's not very often. We have a pretty low warranty uh, rate, but if we do have something happen to someone out in the field, I'm like, hey, send me pictures, text them to my cell phone because I want to see what, what's going on. Yeah, that's cool. That's, that's something that we about. talk about a lot on this show, that if you have an issue with a product, don't just go online and talk shit or right. spread that out because you are affecting people's businesses by doing that. Mm -hmm. Reach out to these companies. If they don't want to take you serious or they don't want to do anything about it, by all means, you got to do what you got to do. I get that. But most companies like you guys want to make the product better or you want to take care of somebody's problem and you'll do it, but you can't do that if you don't know about it. Right. Exactly. So you got to have the problem, you got to have the issue, and then bring it to your attention. See well, them at the trade show and not be like a jerk about it. Because I've been at some booths where people come up like, yeah, this is shit, man. Da, da, da. I'm like, dude, is that any way to talk to somebody? <laughs> like, I'm about yeah. to step in. Get the hell out of here, man. Right. right. <laughs> well, and I, I, you know, and I think we're indebted to, Janelle and I are indebted to all the people that were so stinking super cool about us trying to innovate uh, the poll, especially because uh, the first ones we were using uh, um, uh, a lever that was uh, not strong enough. And so they would hit the lever to drop the pole and would come down. And after a while, it would snap that little lever because it was made out of a like an ABS or something, uh, you know, the, the lever locking Of course, the when we gave it to 50, 60 Pullman in the field, mm. it, none of that happened. And, <laughs> uh, and, and then we put that pole out and that started happening. And mm. I really wanted to slink under the desk because the phone uh, calls were coming in and it was like, oh no, that didn't happen, you know, when we were field testing it. Mm. And, you know, some of the, some of the pool men we gave uh, the original polls to were, you know, bears, you know, just, I, I, and I'm thinking, what were you doing? Like ballet back there with this thing? You <laughs> it know, almost needs the... <laughs> like a, have you guys ever thought of putting like a, like a shock absorber inside the pool? Um, kind of like in the tubing, just so that when you say you went boom, it's like essentially what like suspension on a vehicle does, but it's it absorbs it. So it's like, zzz. you mean one that like the top comes down and hits it? That's so say you, uh, obviously if you're putting the net on, it'll absorb mm. and the, and a, uh, brush, it'll absorb it. But it's most like, you know, when people are like really knocking down on a step or something, it'll, uh, absorb that impact a little bit how i haven't there's a i've thought of the other side uh some of the things where like some of the parts come together they maybe not slam together so hard and i have some like prototypes or things like that uh, but that's an interesting thought especially like uh brushes you know some of those brushes not ours <laughs> hopefully but uh you you bump the you bump that step like the you know first time you put the brush in the water and then you, you hit it and you brush you know on those, some of those uh, less expensive brushes and it snaps that metal yeah. bar that's like yeah. cheap pop metal though so mm -hmm. we don't use that but we're I know we're gonna get to it but love the replacement parts because at the end of the day like it is totally inevitable we are way these are like the most important things these are the most used tools that we used mm -hmm. on a daily basis like yeah. yep. stuff is going to break or get yeah. damaged with time like it's inevitable that you're seeing 10 20 pools a day five days a week and you're just it's in every backyard and you're just hitting steps hitting walls yeah. hitting everything you know, yeah. you're getting basketballs off roofs you're, <laughs> yeah, you're right you're saving cats you're doing Fighting everything dogs <laughs> yeah. yeah why not someone Jump. saved an armadillo with oh. our net there you go. <laughs> and, and another That's guy, awesome. And another guy up, I think, near uh, you guys from uh, Hesperia. Is that where you were from? Yeah, from, well, Victorville, but yeah, right there. Victorville, yeah. Mm -hmm. it was another guy, Jason, was up there. He, he got in a fight with a bobcat once with our net. Oh, I see, wow. with, 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 with our brush. There you go. He said he showed up at the pool and there's a little baby bobcat. He's like, oh, how cute. And he dropped all this stuff and took, was taking pictures of the baby bobcat. And he's like, what an idiot am I? So the mama was right, right there and came Aww. out and attacked him. And he, he fought this thing for, I don't know, five minutes or so. I mean, that's a long time. 
uh, with the, with the time. net on, I mean, with yep. the with the brush on the end. <laughs> <laughs> so That's crazy. Uh, so we're, we have multi use tools that we put out there, <laughs> zookeeper <laughs> tools. Yeah. So uh, well, didn't jump Kyle, into the didn't Kyle? Yeah, Kyle fight fought off, off a, a dog. dog. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, he, oh. <laughs> yeah. I saw Eric fight off a dog once uh, on our pool route. <laughs> That's my boot. I I uh, I look over. I'm in the truck, and I look over. He's talking to the to the customer, and I see Eric hopping around on one foot. <laughs> and he's he's talking to the customer and i'm like why is he hopping around talking to the customer and this uh, cocker spaniel mm. was uh, attacking him <laughs> i That's wanted awesome. to kick it and the lady was screaming at me don't you hurt my dog oh, Eric, like, so i'm gonna let it bite never. me you know yeah. so uh <laughs> it was funny oh, man so i want to i want to get more into the polls in a second but i don't want to sure. forget the features of the net like the flat rent you know flat bottom of it because that's I remember buying the first Prada net I did and it changed my whole career, you know, from, of cleaning pools. And that was the reason why, you know, that flat what, that, I don't like know what you twist on the front yeah. with a mm-hmm. scoop. Yeah. Yeah. So how did that kind of, I mean, obviously you would, you'd mentioned earlier, you wanted to be able to scoop things better. Absolutely. But. And I have to credit, uh, uh, a really kind of like a legend in the, in the net, in the pool world, uh, Dick Gross, he's the first one to put that twist on the front mm. from purity pools. Mm-hmm. Uh, and With like uh, the red baron or something mm-hmm. yeah. yeah and those guys are those guys are great and they make great products uh and uh so he's the one that had that twist on the front and then i'm the one i came further and i changed the way the plastic was configured uh because i really wanted it kind of emphasize more the ability to shovel leaves out because remember i was in the san Ana canyon all i was doing is scooping out leaves from eucalyptus trees like literally every day yeah so what you, um, what you say twist twist on the front what? so yeah talking about the lip the yeah the lip but the f- bend on it. the frame also twists out open like a, kind of like a shovel or like oh. a spoon i guess so it's not just it's not just a flat bar that that's shaped into hoop the front edge also that leading scooping part also twists forward um, okay. well because eric would always say with the older tools he would have to like really bump the the front edge of the the mm-hmm. net to kind of pop the uh, you know leaves or coins or whatever up into the water and then go under it, and he was like, I kind of just want like a dustpan effect, sure. right. you know, yeah. where you're just gliding on the bottom and and you you don't have to keep like you kinda know like one motion yeah instead one of motion a pop yeah and scoot back and then have yeah. to go. it's yeah. definitely an, it's definitely an art form <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> with, without the piranhas you know it's it's much harder <laughs> but but if there's like a screw or a BB or something yep. that don't, you just you're just there for just pushing around the bottom. It's too heavy that, to pop yeah, up in the air. Yeah, and it couldn't get it. So that's what I wanted to solve that. And, and we thought, well, how how efficient is this front lip, you know, uh, with the twist that Eric has on it? So we gave it to, like, a, I think it was like a six-year-old kid, and we threw some coins in the pool, and we said, can you get these out? Because, you know, we were field testing, and just, like, one scoop, and it was like they just all went wow. right into the yeah. net. Really? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's a that's, that's awesome. a really good test because I would think that that'd be probably a, a lot more difficult than normal debris that's in a pool because yeah. it's so yeah it's so thin and dense. Yep. That yeah. it would be if you could get that out. Yeah, but if a kid anywhere. could do it, you know, then it and then yeah. you know it it it's got to be doing its job. It's working. Mm-hmm. Definitely. And I wanted the parts to be easy to replace too. So um, you know because. I just felt like, you know, if we're out here working, I don't want to lose 30 minutes working on this thing. So, And that is the one thing when we were cleaning pools and I would go with him. Um, you know, while he was cleaning the pool, he was like, can you change this net out? And I was like, okay, you know, and I'm trying to pull it at 7 o'clock in the morning going, you know, like, it's not coming off and I don't want to break a nail. Uh, so he's like, well, you got to get a screwdriver and you have to get you know uh, some of these tools and kind of pry it off and i was like this is (laughs) this is crazy and as we started developing the product you know thinking when you're cleaning pools you don't have a lot of time to sit there and mess around with your your products you know even like you said you don't want to babysit them and you don't want to kill 15 minutes of your time out there uh, repairing, you, pool you know, then, you yeah. got, you could have clean a pool at that, at that point. So it, we wanted it to be really fast. And, and when we came out with the original nets, uh, the plastic was really nice to take on and oh, off. Yeah. Oh boy. We had the plastic just, 
just nice. It, it, it was it was rigid enough to stay on while you did your job, uh, but when you went to go take it off, it was it was really nice. It just came right off. And, and the, the stainless bar was only an eighth inch thick, which made it real easy to just slip on and off. So but, was, but even on our first piranhas uh, or the earlier piranhas, and then about 2001, 2002, I start getting these calls from pool guys going, yeah, this, this slip only lasted us like two weeks. And oh, wow. I was like, wow, why? Well, what's going on? And um, I get another call like that, and I'm like, what's going on? Well, Pebble Tech. They didn't have that before, so Pebble Tech started chewing up that particular plastic. Oh. And so then we had to go back to the drawing board and make it a little bit more rigid. Yeah, mm -hmm. Pebble Tech and was fairly new back then in the 90s and became real popular, especially with the, all that boom about that time she was talking yeah. about a lot of homes. And so it, we had to make, because we had to make the plastic more rigid, I still feel we have, you know, uh, a fairly easy replacement. I don't think you need uh, a screwdriver to get it off or anything, but it, it's not like the original, you know, prior to pool tech where it just came on and off so easy. Right. Oh, that yeah. seems like a really cool feature. So you learn along the way. You have to make adjustments, Yeah. you know. Well, it makes a big difference because that changes how you can net a pool for sure. I mean, and when you're talking about the eucalyptus leaves, and here we have those two trees that are rough. And <laughs> I'm, I mean, that's if you can't you can't figure out how to do that, it can takes forever, you know. Because pulling out your vac hose, that's a whole project in itself. Yeah. Especially we have so many in-floor cleaning systems in Arizona, so you know if you can net a pool and net it correctly. We were talking the other night, like if you start netting and you see a bunch of dirt coming up like that, you should get the vacuum out, you know, but <laughs> if you can actually net just these leaves and here and there, it will save you a ton of time. Yeah, to do the vacuuming. And that's where we got net the and net jet. and jet because Eric would say, hey, you know, I want to, well, I don't really want to net and jet because, you know, you do want to <laughs> drop that vac and you do want to brush the sides. But he's like, if I can get most of that debris with the net, then, you know, we could call it like, you know, net and jet. And so that's where that uh, little part of our logo. But I didn't, you know, cool. I didn't think of that. Our Ips, we were in the North Orange County Ipsa chapter, and that, that was a term for I'm just going to net this pool and get the heck out of here. Right. You know? So they were like, you know, <laughs> just going to net and jet. So I plagiarized those. Well, things. yeah, <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, he really <laughs> wanted to, to get most of it done with the net. Exactly. Yeah. He could yeah. get most of it done with the net. Uh, that's going to be advantageous when you're cleaning the pool. Well, definitely. I mean, with th that many leaves, you're not trying to, like, clog the line or overwork the pump by exactly. sending all right. those leaves through. I mean, even if you did vacuum, you would probably, probably want to net yeah. Yeah. the majority of that well, stuff those, if possible. And those leaves are, like, at least a foot long or longer, so they, they don't even want to go up into the vac. They just, it's just... You got to pull them all out. And then, you know, along with that net, there's so many different components. And I know we could probably go on for hours. But then, you know, you have all those leaves and you don't want to keep, you know, get a few leaves and then pull it out and then go to the trash can. So you, we really had to try to create that frame, that aluminum frame, like the stainless steel frame with the strength because we were like, you know, we want guys to fill that to the very top. It could be. You know, I don't know how many pounds that would be, but very heavy. And yeah. you should just be able to pull that out instead of, you know, once again, babying your net where you have to constantly go to the trash can. Just fill well, that sucker I, up. I love the wide mouth net because yeah. the, the net the, the nets themselves are even deeper, too. So you can if you're doing a lot of on the bottom with a deeper net, that it keeps makes it much easier that you know, oh, the debris yeah. doesn't mm -hmm. come out like yeah. some of the other shorter nets. Hey. I, I, I didn't even take this for you guys, but <laughs> I seriously, you know how heavy duty your net is? Look at this picture I took at my house. <laughs> that is, the whole thing is filled with lemons. Yeah. That's that awesome. been, they were in the pool? Yes. Yeah. My yeah. neighbor cut down his tree, his lemon tree. And <laughs> it all went in the, pool, in the pool. Well, no, they were by the equipment, some in the pool. They were all over the place, but I was like, what is strong enough to hold a bunch of lemons and me not have to run to the trash can every two seconds? Good Jeopardy question there. <laughs> well, I love that wide mouth one. And then, I mean, we use the fine mesh ones too. Oh, I, I love the fine mesh one because, and 
I think this is something we did, brothers, and not a lot of people did, where we would give them both a, a mm-hmm. wide mouth and a fine mesh. Wow. And we would tell them, you know, hey, because we use Polar X's and the pools would just pop, but like the fine mesh net would make it look so much better. We would just tell them oh, at the yeah. very end, comb over the pool real quick with the yep. fine mesh, like take them both with you. And it just, it gives the pool just a like a clean look. Heck you don't yeah. have that like okay. film on the top or that. We're going to be you know, waxing the surface. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. And it was, it made a big difference for our customers. Yeah. I mean, that was really cool that we would give them both. And then, the, some of the guys complained about it, but I'm like, no, listen, like, well, cause it got, they yeah. have this, they it had this expectation. The, the plants had the very, the film, mm-hmm. the fine film on the yep. top where you could just see it. Yeah, you could get that. Well, off. and yeah. the fine mesh has so much drag. I mean, yeah. you use that. I I know guys who use it yeah. on every pool, and oh, they are shit. like the Hulk on one side of. I was gonna say they must have killer bicep because <laughs> that that thing is ain't much getting yeah. through that net. Yeah. Like That's why we use it kind of like a finisher, yeah. you know, just to finish yeah, it off. Oh, and yes, it looks finisher. it works so well to. Well, so if those guys, you know, <laughs> give them that, the idea to use a regular one most of the time and then finish it off. <laughs> but but the point you made was really important. That last step, I mean, how long does it take to, was it a minute, really, if you think about Probably, it? Probably, yeah. To go around the pool and grab that last little bit and just the pride of workmanship co- ship comes across. The homeowner looks at it. It's, like, it's beautiful when you're walking out the door. That little extra mile on a service business is where it's at, you mm-hmm. know. And then your customers, they see that and they become your sales force, you know. So um, it's that just going that extra distance, you're exactly right. It's, and it's one more thing to talk about. You know, we use two different types of nets yep. and explaining that to a customer, I'm sure that goes a long way. It's like, yeah. you know, that's something that they may never have thought before or just one more thing that they don't ever want to do. Right. Or it's like, you know, we pretty much get everything off, but then we have a second net that really just kind of, if there is any thin layer of film or anything on top this is going to get that because nothing is passing through this bag yeah. mm-hmm. and it's like say no more like just do it and every you know especially here in Arizona, we have all these imported trees and imported oh things God. so it's like every piece of debris is different so yeah. some pools have these <laughs> tiny debris some pools have eucalyptus leaves so you just you know it's better to have multiple tools on your truck absolutely you can, right you can accomplish whatever you want to accomplish yep all right well we've reached our last break When we get back, we will hear about how Eric spent over an hour in a Home Depot aisle that gave him the idea to make the power pole, the thought process behind the replacement parts, their line of brushes, and the Piranha 2 nets. This episode of the Pool Chasers podcast is supported by Natural Chemistry. NC Brands is offering solutions for pool professionals in 2021. And they don't just mean awesome products like Pro Series Pro Blend or Pool Perfect Max, which will help increase the efficiency of any pool program. NC has also launched the new Pro Series Pool and Spa app, designed for professional use only. This app provides expert water analysis and the ability to store customer information, including photos of the backyard and water testing history. You can even email a visit report to your customers with the unique feature that links right to your smartphone's email function. Not only that, but NC now has two new training opportunities for dealers this year. One option for live, customized sessions, and another one consisting of key training topics in a module or optional quiz format. To hear more about it, listen to episode 135, or check them out by going to naturalchemistry.com or ncprotraining.com, and you can even click the link below. Yeah, let's let's jump back into the pool yeah. real quick. Go ahead. Um, so what went into kind of developing that? I mean, was it the same kind of pain point for you, or you just kind of wanted to make something different you know um there's a kind of the story behind that um is interesting um because you know poles have been unchanged since 50s maybe Mm. uh for the swimming pool industry um and uh and there's a certain sort of way they would have to be made to be specific for our use um and so um, in the meantime, <laughs> I think a lot of people understand that they'll get a, a honeydew list from their wife. And it's like, that's kind of not the same list I have that I want to do, of things I want to do. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she asked me to uh, go down to Home Depot or something and get her a, um, get her a, a brush to do some cleaning or for something. With I a put pole, her, you mm. know, something that. Yeah, uh, with a pole, yeah. She, so because uh, she wanted to reach a certain distance uh, so it's like okay i'll get it and after like three weeks of have her reminding me hey did you get that did you get that so I finally okay i went down to home depot and um 
So I'm grabbing poles and I'm looking at them. I'm trying to get her a little brush. I'm looking at the pole. It's like, okay, hang on a second. You know, I've seen a lot of different things with my experience now as a manufacturer. I've been in a lot of factories and learned a lot about metals and all that stuff. And I'm sitting here staring at these poles in the paint section, kind of opening them and closing them, kind of half in La La Land, just sort of imagining what's going on, uh, you know, with the mechanism, et cetera. And like, probably, I'm serious, probably an hour standing in the aisle in the paint Oh, yeah, I'm like, where's my stuff? Out, yeah. <laughs> Excuse me, sir, are you? Uh, yeah. <laughs> are you gonna buy something? <laughs> yeah, well, we're Walter, closed. Walter Mitty. <laughs> yeah, Walter. wake up, Walter Mitty. <laughs> yeah, that, was, that was it. I swear, I was like, oh man, this is. And so I'm just thinking about it. Going, wait a minute here, hang on a second. If this thing is reconfigured, and I'm like going over and over in my mind, just kind of standing there, and finally, it's like, okay. Um, I think I got this and I bought what I needed for her and I jumped in the car. By the time I got home, I had figured out with things I'd seen with extrusion and other stuff in the, you know, it's like, okay, I know what to do. I can totally change these poles. And that's how the, uh, the power pole came about. Well, he, so. he, he saw the concept, but you know, it took a lot of changing because it really just isn't a reverse painter's it's, pole. It's a you whole know? different sure. application. Uh, yeah, you're not using the same kind of pressures with painting exactly. as you are. Exactly. Like it doing. had to be adapted for the application because when you're just rolling, you know, paint on a wall, you're not putting a lot of pressure on that. And so this was a whole new thing. And he said, you know, I think I got an idea for a new pole. And I was like, Oh, okay. And so he, he walked in the house and I didn't see him again for about three months. <laughs> he just locked <laughs> it was him. was the best three months she had of <laughs> yeah. our marriage. Yeah. She just, so. He just went in the room and said, you know, I'm going to start drawing this up. I'm going to start writing this up and it's going to take a while. And I was like, okay, well, yeah. <laughs> at you least I got, at least he got his honeydew list done. Yeah. Yeah. If, you're, if your wife asks you to go to the store to get something, don't, don't complain. It, your next big idea it could, might be right there. Yeah, yeah. It might be right there. Honey, uh, do you have anything else you want me to run the store for? <laughs> <laughs> right. Even though Eric might be on YouTube, like watch this dude yeah. <laughs> for, an an hour, for an hour. <laughs> Yeah, the line is like That's idiots. Awesome. This pole, this pole is ten bucks. This dude has been staring, <laughs> messing with it for an hour, <laughs> contemplating whether he should buy it or not. <laughs> That's, That's, awesome. Awesome. That's, That's a cool way to figure it out, though, because we've talked before. Like, um, since I said I came from the window industry, like yeah. their poles in the window cleaning is is by far more advanced. They have ones that bend and snap and do all kinds of right. crazy stuff. But it's cool you saw like something like that in the store and we're like hey i could i could maybe adapt this concept well they actually have lines running through them because they'll reach mm -hmm. up you know three four stories and they've got pressurized lines wow. right, um that actually squirt out you know actual you know window, window cleaning, cleaning right. products yep. when we started searching uh you know because we thought well we, we want to patent this of course and and so we started searching things and so we looked at the window mm -hmm. industry and we were like wow they have all kinds of stuff. Oh, yeah, they um, they're of very tools. advanced. You yeah. know, it's not just uh, you know one pole. You could do a lot of different things. So why wouldn't we be able to make this strong enough to you know withstand the the pressures of cleaning fifteen to twenty pools a day? Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think it's. Um, you start thinking about it though. It is quite different both sides of it. Yeah. I mean, there's some cool technology there, mm -hmm. but I think that it's much. If anybody, if you were ever manufacturing something like this, going up is much different than going down yep. um, because of gravity and different things like that and dealing with water opposed to just being out in the air well, and kind of, of being up against. Because yep. because of gravity, things are different. It's falling onto a building yep. opposed to yep. you're actually working much harder to kind of tweak it and work like yep. on the side of a wall exactly. most commercial right. applications like in window cleaning all you're doing is pulling straight down you're not mm -hmm. even they're not even having to turn a blade so you're really just your pressure is like up and down so because that's more yeah. natural whereas right. we're you're kind yep. of fighting against something in a pool that's why yeah. right mm -hmm. in the beginning it doesn't probably feel very natural because it's there's, not a natural there's right. a lot of leverage yeah. a lot of leverage so mm -hmm. um 
you know, he was coming up with the idea. We had a lot of prototypes in the beginning. And a lot of cool people kind of cheered us on, even though they were getting warranties and we were apologized to a lot of people, hey, we're doing our best. And they're like, you know what, man? Um, I'm totally cool. Just like, uh, you know. Just make it better. Just make it better. <laughs> I can't tell you how many people said that. That's uh, so it's cool. like right on. So, they But put with up the with concept, it. there were so many different prototypes that we had to go through mm-hmm. to make it uh, what it is because like I was mentioning with the leverage in the pools and then you know because you have the coping around the side and sometimes you know you're going to come into contact with that and then you know you have a bag on the end and there's just all kinds of ways that that pole has to turn and move and takes a lot of torque Bend, yeah, yeah mm-hmm. exactly and yeah so we were giving them out to you know field testing you know this is this is not out on the market we need yeah. to to develop this and and make it uh, stronger and one of the things Eric found he'd probably be better telling this but is you know you don't want it to fill with water because then you you have issues so all those little holes you know where the button goes could fill with water so Mm -hmm. that's how he came with the inner chamber which just kind of made it a complete different tool than anything out there yeah because the inner chamber has all those holes that click right yeah, well, the outside of that, there's the inside tube inside the pole. It's yeah. got all the holes in it, but there are a couple of issues going on. First of all, water is going to go straight in there, and mm-hmm. then when you pull it out, water is going to come squirting straight out of it, right? Right, right. Uh, and then when it's underwater, you're pushing it around. Now you have a bunch of water in there that you're also pushing around. So I thought, you know, if we could block that water from going in and add that additional wall down the back and then plug the end, now that whole upper tube can stay uh, empty. Dr- empty, yeah. Like your thumb on a straw. Yeah. Exactly, yeah, exactly. And the water can't get through, and then the beauty of it is, it's like, okay, the next worry was, well, you just created a whole bunch of weak points all the way down that eight-foot tube by drilling holes in it um, that was some leverage like we're talking about. I mean, these things get pulled and twisted and bent every direction. Now you have a weak spot, you could rip it on a hole. So that's where the, that's another one of the beauties of the, of the wall running along the back is it's now reinforcing that whole tube. So that's one, that's why when people say, oh, the thing fell off the truck and got run over and it's, you know, it's not brand new, but it still works. You know, I was able to keep working. Uh, it's because that's all reinforced. Mm-hmm. So in fact, I had, I, since I don't have this phone anymore, but years ago I had a phone where I could, uh, I took some video of, of like rolling my truck over one of our reinforced pole designs and it just came out perfect. Didn't even make a ding in it. That's so cool. that that's a whole different added feature as, as well. It's now it's reinforced. So Yeah, and I think, you know, you were mentioning the, the locking mechanism would break when you guys first made it. And I think people <laughs> we used to tell our team too, because you know, you, you have it all the way out and you just like <laughs> hold your hand and go <laughs> And it it slams right like that probably was what was breaking your clips because i mean we did that lots of times where it was yeah like you can't you can't use it like a i don't even know what it, so I know it to, looks but, cool but you gotta yeah <laughs> you need better judgment on when to stop yeah, like, yeah. Exactly. don't just let it hit bottom out yeah like yeah. i remember we, we probably broke several of those that way I'm like yeah. stop doing that you can't just you know let it accordion down like that i'm all would you do this would you just string out a freaking a, a tape measure all the way out and then Flash. just hold it and then just let it rip all the right. way back yeah. no you wouldn't huh because your hand would get hurt yeah well the interesting thing about that uh button was it's the same exact material like when you go to home depot and you buy a uh, power drill you know it's a plastic mm. what is it abs plastic abs and epsilon yeah. yeah so you know, we're thinking that's, you know, very strong because yeah. you don't, you know, I've dropped some of those drills on the ground and they just don't break. So, but you put it in a different application mm-hmm. and initially it worked out in the field testing because we don't release anything until we're very certain, or at least we feel very certain that we're not going to have problems because we don't want, well, we don't want warranties, but the other thing is we we don't want to disappoint people. You know, we know people are out there doing their job, and they they need to go fast, and, and we know how frustrating it was to have tools break. So we really don't want to put that burden on anybody. So we field tested those, and they worked. Mm. And But, you know, you make 
two, three thousand of those, and it might be a different story. And that's when you find out where the flaws are. <laughs> you know, yeah. that or, and then you get some reliable people, like my brother. He literally will break everything I, I make. And I don't know why. He's the one. Who, it's like if he's I a pool man. So yeah, he's a we pool call man him Bam Bam. Thou, thousand <laughs> Oaks. Yeah. Bam Bam. <laughs> we get, that's awesome. Give him that. It's like he's the guy to test it because I know he's going to break it. I don't even know if he's trying. He just <laughs> breaks my stuff. <laughs> so it's like he'll, he'll call me up, say, okay, here, this this broke, that broke, and all right, try the next version. He and, and other people that we've come to know over the years that, that tend to test stuff for us. So Yeah, when it first started broken, he was breaking. He was one of the first guys to call us, and I just told Derek, I said, that's your brother. He breaks everything. It just can't right. happen. On, on And then the call started coming. Yeah. And, you know, so we immediately uh, rectified it and went back to the drawing board. And um, we've shut down production. Don't want to put. Yeah, out. I don't want to put don't anything wanna... out. Mm-mm. And so we had a lot of people, uh, probably uh, our sales team at the time was like, hey, just put it out. You know, I mean, it doesn't mm-hmm. matter. Just put it out. <laughs> and no it's way. like, it no, it no matters way. to us. It matters to you, but it also matters in, I think you're aware of this industry. If they try something once and don't like it, they're not trying it yeah. again. Yeah. It's exactly. because so, you used to clean pools and you know yeah. that exactly if yeah. somebody made pools and they didn't give a shit and it ruined your day where you couldn't finish your pools or something, that yep. that you won't look at that company the same ever again. And right. here's the thing yeah. you're, with Pullman um, is they're very honest across the board. So when you're at a trade show and they come up, I mean, they want to tell you what their frustrations are. We want to hear them. And he can identify with them. Yep. So we we want to make it – we know what the frustration is, so we want to make it so that they, they're not frustrated. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Love that. One of the things we found is that since the tendency now is to push the button and just let it slide down and close, <laughs> so uh, to hit the button and then let that inner tube slide and come all the way down, if you hear a little as it's coming down, or you know, it's 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 just kind of microscopically chiseling away mm-hmm. at the little pin on the lever that goes into the hole. And of course, it's taking a little bit of the tubing layer off and kind of maybe can start ovaling out those holes or, or opening them up a little bit. Right. And so but the first recommendation is that just make sure that when you're pushing the button in, you're just pushing it in all the way because um, the goal is to really not hear that. Um, and if it does get to the point where then it's kind of worn that little pin off a bit, what happens is you might be vacuuming or something and you'll push on it, it might slip a hole. It's like, oh, it just, it just slipped a little bit. And that's where the replacement uh, kit comes in. Because you can put a new lever and it's got a fresh new pin as part of it that mounts into those holes and it almost every single time it'll stop that problem. Um, so that was another thing with the replacement parts. You know, I want it to be easy. I want it to be replaceable. I just want to get the part that I need. Like with our nets, you can just buy the, 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 the bag. You don't have to buy the lip. Um, I don't. I, I never liked the idea of having to go buy a kit because I only need one thing. So um, we just sell everything individually. Or you can just buy the lip, right? Yeah. yeah, you can buy just the lip. Exactly. Sorry, I meant to mention that. Yeah, you can just. I just need a lip. Perfect. So I, you know, just buy that. Um, because uh, I think of all the times that I went to buy something, it's like, well, I, I don't really need all those parts. I just want that one little thing in there. So um, I figured this, we'll just sell everything individually. Uh, the grip on the end of the pole is replaceable as well. And that's really important because those things get like harpoons, man. Mm -hmm. They get sharp after they've been dragged around for, you know, and you've seen it and I think we've all seen it. And people do bump into them and could get injured on that. So, you know, we we make the grip replaceable. It's an easy replacement. And you know what I couldn't stand is that, that those grips come off and then you've got this metal end, especially if that thing's getting sharp from being dragged around. And to top it off, uh, if you hit the button and you bring the pole down, like while you're cleaning, let's say you're done vacuuming, and okay, time to collapse the pole, you hit the button, it comes down and and uh, closes all the way and, and hits the housing, that's fine, but we don't want that grip to fly off. So we also have screws uh, in there to hold that thing on, which you've probably seen, mm-hmm. uh, which is awesome because then now, you know, that, that thing stays on there. So uh, we offer the replacement part on that one as well with the screws and and uh, we just try and make it as convenient as possible. These would be the parts associated with this item, this, this replacement part change, and, and that's packaged that way. So we sell the lip and, excuse me, the, the grip and the uh, lever separately as a result, just whatever one you need. 
That's awesome. Are those the only two rebuild kits that you guys have? Is for the nets and for the handle? Yes. Uh, so to, to yes, in other words, like all the nets that you can buy are all individually replaceable. It's a deep, fine oh. mesh, whatever, and you can just get the net, and that's all you're getting. The actual little bag, and then the lip is separate, and then the lever itself comes with a, a, a new spring and a new little pin to hold it in the housing because I figured, well, if you're changing out the lever, that's the time to change the spring. So I threw, you know, put one of them in there. And then likewise with the grip, it would be everything you need for the grip. Additionally, in the grip for the the grip replacement kit, there's this kind of little C-shaped, uh, kind of a little plastic ring. Sometimes, I don't know if you've noticed, but when you go to pull the Piranha, extend it, the power pole all the way out, it stops, it won't separate. Yep. There's a little round uh, like kind of like a like a c-shape uh, little stop that's mounted on the pole on the inside that causes it to stop and i put that in the grip replacement because you have to take the grip off to replace that part so i thought you know it's logical that's a process that could be done all together in one shot so if anybody's familiar with the the grip kit they'll see that it has that little part in there too yeah so that and that'd be the time to change it so i try to i try to keep everything kind of clustered according to what you would be doing or, or according to what your needs are, not like package a whole bunch of stuff together with replacements. Well, so. Replacement parts are important because, you know, you're, you're in a, it's an investment in what you do. So yeah. you're investing your money in your pole and your net and, you know, that way you can just get a little bit more money and fix it up. So exactly yeah, that, that makes it to me think you're buying, you know, you are buying, but buying a, a really good product, you know, that you, if it has replacement parts, means that that product is supposed to last for a long time. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. And it shouldn't be rocket science to change them out. You yeah. Know, or, t- or time. Yeah, because you were mentioning with your screwdriver and stuff, like, yeah. you know, at that point, if your net net is $11, you can just buy another net. <laughs> like, I'm right. not spending 35 minutes trying to fish out this <laughs> thought, you know. <laughs> so, <That's true. laughs> so if you guys made an easy process, like, that's... That's a lot helpful for sure. Yeah. So I wasn't aware that you guys had brushes um, oh, until, yeah. until recently. So maybe you can uh, tell us a little bit about that and even why you guys decided to do brushes. Yeah, the brushes, um, actually, uh, that was not one of our inventions. It was uh, somebody else who, uh, a really nice guy that we would always do um, uh, the trade show. Uh, next to his booth and he would see you know how many people would come up to our booth and stuff and he had the brushes it was called the monoarch yeah everett Everett, uh owned the company and uh he just he wasn't in the pool industry by trade so at some point in on his venture he just approached us and asked us you know if we would like to take it on to our line and um i know when eric first saw that brush because Everett was next to us at the trade show, Everett, Eric said, oh, I wish I would have invented that brush. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's a butt chicken brush. Yeah. And so <laughs> Eric said, walks over uh, to Everett, and he's like, how'd you think of that? He's mm. like, it's gorgeous. And um, uh, and Everett was like, you know, he, he went into telling us how, how he came by it. And, uh, uh, and he had a great big following a really big following for the monoarch um, and things just happened in his life where he could no longer take care of that business uh, with everything else that he was doing so um, we brought it on to, to our line and we were very proud to because it had a outstanding following and um, when I talk to customers who use that brush they swear by that brush oh. and that's a true commercial grade brush. Mm-hmm. Like she said, I looked at it and I said, man, that thing's beautiful. Um, so the back, you know, we're used to, I was used to some of the brands that are, you buy them and literally, like I mentioned before, and like you were talking about, if you bump something, it's a real shock to the tool. Um, and there were times, so many times I bought a new brush and I went to brush the first pool with it and I bumped the corner of a step and snapped the backing bar like right on the eye hole where the where the screws go to mount the bristle on, if you know what I'm Sucks. talking about. It <laughs> yeah. I actually, yeah, it was just, it would drive me crazy. And um, so when I saw Everett's brush, it's like, okay, that thing's really nice and it's thick. It's all cast aluminum. It's not pot metal. Uh, in fact, it, it's, the, the backing on that's so strong that we actually offer replacement kits for the bristles. 
Oh, wow. Um, because it'll outlast the bristles, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> which I, is I kind of unheard of, of if you think about it. I had a lot of guys <laughs> calling me when we first took the product on um, saying, I, I just love this brush. Um, you know, the bristle bar uh, is... Uh, you know, needs to come off, but I, what do I do? And at that point I was like, well, I, you just got to buy a new one and throw away the, the, the metal portion. And we just got to thinking like, what a waste, you know? It's I an mean, electric that's... toothbrush. Whenever you uh, <laughs> just yeah. replace the, the bristles. The head. Yeah. Right. Yeah. And, yeah. uh, that, um, you know, the, the bristles on that, the nylon bristles are, are really nice because they are true nylon. So it's not, uh, like a plaster or no it's not a poly pro or anything yeah. like that it's a it's nylon and to top it off we have stainless and we have combo say so uh, how many brushes total well there there different are sizes. yeah, yeah there are three sizes a 10 a 20 and a 26 inch and then they come in three bristle patterns nylon combo and then all stainless um they're awesome items and uh they and people who love who like them or who use them love them uh, because what happens is the how, long, how long have you guys had that? Uh, I'd say Been probably seven years, eight years. Oh, wow. Think yeah. of, think of yeah. how a brush is normally designed. The ones that are supposed to be a quote-unquote wall brush that can kind of handle a curved surface, like kind of where the, where the floor of the pool kind of transitions up to the wall of the pool. The, if you can imagine, the backing bar on that thing is straight and then it bends up on the sides a little bit, kind of like a little wing on the end. Mm. And the traditional approach has been to create the bristles that follow that pattern. And it's like, that doesn't make any sense because you just lost three inches of cleaning on each side of the brush right. if you're on a flat surface. So ours are cut straight across, left to right, all the way in a single line. And yet that backing bar has like a curve to it. Um, so that curve and, al and allows it to kind of flare out a little bit so you can get better into the corners. Uh, and also uh, you get the brushing, the bristles making contact the full 20 plus inches all the way across. So I don't know if that description made any sense, but there's way more contact of the bristles on, the, on, the, on a flat surface mm -hmm. especially. Mm -hmm. So it's mm -hmm. a beautiful item. It's really cool. I love how you get so excited about tools. <laughs> I'm serious because, you know, it's a very important part of our business and I don't think people take it serious enough. And like back to my story about the window cleaning lady, like I just got so upset with these crappy tools. I'm like, there has to be something better. And, you know, it's if people treat them properly and mm. understand that the pole and your net and your brush are the three t tools you use at every single pool you all day long. You can't get a pool clean unless you have those. Yeah, then, no. you know, I love how excited you get. <laughs> I get how beautiful it <laughs> is. <laughs> yeah. you should he talks this at stuff in I the middle it. of the night. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but this is like, this is your craft. Like, uh, mm -hmm. I talked about this before, the way uh, a samurai sleeps and respects his katana is the same way because he knows like without it i'm nothing yeah and yeah. without you know taking care of your tools or you know different things like that like you don't really have anything so you've got to take very good care of it and you got to pay attention and when things go wrong or paying attention to oh this is a trigger something could go wrong i'm gonna be proactive i'm gonna have two poles on my yeah. truck so that i could just take one and fix the other one when i get back to the shop or having extra kits or all these different things um yeah that's and, and the quality yeah. comes in the nuances that you wouldn't normally stop and think about well we clean a lot of pools and so you know we're into the thousands and thousands you know of pools that we've cleaned with experience so it's like we understand if there's a little nuance on something it may not be big in its appearance but man did it make a difference on how it worked you know yeah it's true so. because people people you know when we first came out with our nets people would go well what's the difference you know, or they're like, what is this? Like, what's a, a difference? Net? Can't you yeah. see? <laughs> <laughs> you change the color. That's it. Yeah. What's the difference well, between your Range Rover yeah. and uh, <laughs> this key over it's here? They four wheels. Go, yeah. What, what's yeah. going on? Yeah. And some people they'll say, hey, you know, just mark it the color. It's just the you know the color. It's like, and it's no. like, well, no, there are so many nuances to our net. And you know, at trade shows, um, I'm like, let me put one in your hand and take it and use it. And, you know, tell us next year when we're back here at the trade show what you thought of it. And, I mean, 
hands down all, all the time. It's They're like, like I'll never use yeah. anything else. And and, and you ever send people out in the ocean when we're in Long Beach? <laughs> Take it out there, go clean up the pulp, go 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 <laughs> clean that up a little bit. Tell me how you feel. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so yeah. you can't maybe you can't see it if you're just looking, but when you when you use it, then you start understanding the little nuances that Eric put in there to to make it uh, just right. Right. And right. wouldn't be able to do that if he hadn't cleaned and and been in the service yeah, side right. of it. Exactly. I think we definitely need more of those people. Hopefully a lot of the pool service companies are being innovators because I don't think anybody understands the struggle more than the people that have done the work. Right. Exactly. Um, yeah. And there's there's a ton of innovation still that can be made um, in all um, different areas. But I feel like you've got to be in the business to truly understand. And when that. a pool man comes to us and says, hey, you know, can you change this? Like just, you know, Eric will know exactly what he's talking about. Yeah. And if you hadn't cleaned pools, you're just not no. going to know. Yeah. No. You're not going to connect with that. Yeah, you're not going to. You know the lingo, too. Like, can you put a wild dingo on the top? <laughs> like, nobody else would know. You know what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Eric's well, I know. I talk, I talk pool guy. Yeah, I know. <laughs> well, you know, what's interesting is I don't even know if you guys, I think you're familiar with our Piranha 2 nets. Yeah, the, we actually, I was going to just tell a story because we had one of the first Piranha 2 nets. Oh, wow. Because you guys had given it to us at a trade show before they were really being sold. And to a testament, to your testament of having good customer service, you know, it, it fell apart. And I remember us talking with you like, hey, this isn't, we're, we can't use this version because it the net does falls out of the lip. You know? Yeah. I remember, you probably just probably remember that. But yeah. it was, uh, well, I remember the it was whole interesting. Head. I'm sure you do. <laughs> But yeah, one of the very first ones we were testing it, and we're like, yeah, we had, we had told you the feedback, and then you guys developed it even further beyond that. So uh, yeah. we didn't use it much. We mostly used the the green ones. But well, yeah. yeah that, well, anyways, you're gonna tell us. Well, so about actually, it. actually <laughs> thanks to you that it's even come this far. I know Kane was sending me pictures. Like, okay, here's the way it's wearing, and and yeah. uh, and so I'm looking at it, and so I've actually reconfigured it since then to uh, allow for additional wear on that. So. That's another one of the things where the little, just that little, a little small change in a little spot can make a big difference. That one, um, that I thought, you know, there's got to be an even smoother way, a smoother surface to just get debris to just slide right into the net. And it's got to be in the shape of that, uh, the black lip on the front. And so I played around with all kinds of shapes and drew as many as I could and tried different mold patterns and stuff like that. And, um, wound up exactly with it with it now and i think we nailed it it's a it's a really strong frame i mean this is like this is like a shovel now if you want to get stuff out this thing's it's it's a beast i mean the the there's a lot of material on the front of that scoop so uh it's heavy duty it's going to last a lot longer especially with pebble tech but then even the bar um, is even a little little bit heavier than the average per, like the other original piranha bar so it's it's got a lot of strength to it and then even with the last little refinements, like I mentioned, uh, Kane had sent me pictures. Like, mm -hmm. okay, I got to change this. And that it's like, um, you know, if I just add this, and it cannot wear out in that spot, et cetera. So I think we, I, I know we, we've since we've uh, done this last versions of it. I mean, we just haven't had any negative feedback on it, which is great. It's, yeah. uh, it's but great. if you're but if you're really new, cool. let's you know, take baby steps, right? You don't want to exactly. Yeah. You don't want to lose the net because I, I feel like I've done that a few times because I was getting cocky. You know, getting stuff up and then it's just poof. Yeah. It's like, yep. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> it just turned into about an hour and a half. It's definitely a level. Because <laughs> it's now it's way worse. It's not at the bottom, it's not at the top, it's, it's in everywhere. suspension. So now I'm just waiting for it to settle in some direction. Yeah, the fine the fine mesh is not great for filling it up super high. <laughs> yeah. no. lose, you'll flip that real quick. <laughs> or a little bubble. Well, you, if somebody if seen new people, they'll just kinda get stuff up and then just sit there. I'm like, dude, bro, you gotta keep yeah, it moving. Yeah, you gotta keep it moving. Yeah. 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 Just, Keep it there and looking around. And the main difference is with the green net, it was always wearing, uh, yeah. you know, to the to the nub. I mean, you're not going to get away from uh, the plastic portion of it wearing, and it would wear to a to a nub. And for years, Eric, you know, would say, "Oh gosh, I just wish I could make it smoother somehow." And you know, you would think, "Well, that probably be a really easy thing to do." Mm -hmm. And it was not. No. It took a lot of uh, different prototypes um, because we had to change the frame. Mm -hmm. 
and uh, but now it's just so beautiful because it's just sloped and when it wears it's sloped and and even the, you the know scooping part yeah yeah the scooping part oh, to cool. where, to the point where you have to uh, when you do have to replace the plastic um, you can still pick up with it that's that's the really cool thing I mean you could with yeah. the green too but there was just that the way the frame was built and the way you had to lay the plastic on top it would just create like a start creating a barrier yeah mm-hmm. yeah because so, it started to get blunt so in this right. case it stays pretty now sharp it stays sharp the whole time yeah. to replace it oh, that's yeah. really cool so is there anything that people should know like is there any ways you shouldn't use this stuff because i'll just say real quick the way we used it was um it was always taken off in the truck so it'd be the pole and it'd be a net get to the location put the net on the pole um, you were talking about putting your stuff inside of it. Yeah, you don't want to ask Eric this. Yeah, because <laughs> uh, like, I don't know how, <laughs> and I've seen our guys do that, um, one one person before, oh, yeah. and I said, do not do that. Right. Like, this is made for, you know, getting stuff out of the pool, and you're also using it to get stuff from the skimmer basket, the pump basket. It's kind of along for the journey. Yeah. Um, but, you know, when you're putting... Like this dude had like a vac head, like all kinds of shit. I'm like, bro, uh, that's a, you have a caddy, man. Yeah. Tabs and soap and brushes. He, he and never testing. had a caddy. The caddies were just coming out when we were. Yeah, getting I, had a, I had one of the old doula carts. Oh though, yeah, but that the was doula still, I couldn't get in every yard. <laughs> but but um, I, you know what? I even went as far as on the back of my toolbox. I had one of the plastic toolboxes on my on my Nissan truck because that's going back a few years. Um, and uh, I even put like a fork there so I could leave the net on the pole and just drop it into the fork, drop it into the fork, leave the net and everything in it and just drive off to the next pool. Oh, man. So I kind of, I just, <laughs> I was, that's why I think I wanted the strongest thing is I just want to not worry about it. But that was kind of the frame of mind I was in. And I, I, I don't know if that's the best advice for everybody. I just kind of, just, just get me to the next pool as fast as I can. Yeah. So, yeah, I think, uh, and you guys definitely know this better than anybody, is everybody's different. Yeah. Everybody's going to treat these, uh, yeah. treat the equipment different, and that's probably what makes your company better is different types of use cases are going to tell you how they did it. And they tell you, like, oh, it doesn't hold up when I do this. Like, well, that's a new one. What I never would have done that. Yeah, <laughs> that's why. I take it, I use it as a barbell. <laughs> at, the, at the gym, I got 245s. <laughs> like, really? And I bet it. Damn. <laughs> <laughs> You've been doing that for a few years now, and you're just barely having problems. Wow, that's that's incredible. Well, that that's actually to the point that Janelle was making earlier is that we put it out with people who we know. It's like just break this thing or or, or try at least, and then, okay, everything seems good, and then we put it on the market, and then we get warranties. It's like okay, now all those other all those people who use it in ways that we never even thought of yeah. are using it, and there's nothing wrong with that. They just maybe just do using it differently than I ever did, or so you have business. to adapt. Yeah. You, you have to, to you have roll to with it, and roll it with it, go back to the drawing board, and go where where mm-hmm. this is a weak spot. We need to correct this, you know, immediately. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, immediately. And with all these pools being built, um, there's going to be, I'm sure, a lot of innovations in every area, not just poles and brushes and stuff, but every area. Everybody's going to have to adjust because pools are getting more complex, maybe yeah. bigger different shapes um other yeah. things like that so some yeah. stuff will stay stay basic and traditional for yeah. and things are traditional for a reason because they work mm-hmm. uh, and then other things like you said with all the different approaches now people are taking because you gotta uh, you gotta think if they're bringing in uh how to run a business uh you know if they're bringing like we started talking about ideas from other industries into that they're bringing those ideas into the construction of the pool to the equipment that's installed and all that stuff. So you're right. There's a lot of, there are some changes all for the better. I'll tell you, this industry was very much in the stone age when we started it. Um, as far as tools and things, I mean, we were, all the pools were plumbed in copper, you know, you were really jamming if you had an inch and a half copper plumbing, you know, it's like, <laughs> Oh gosh, can't even hook a high head pump to that, you know? So now even just the, just the products going into the construction of the pool have changed and, and just elevated the whole industry. Yeah. So, it's, sure. it's been cool to see yeah. and to be part of. Really cool. Before I forget, how did you come up with the name Piranha? She thought of it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah? I just wanted something. Well, we were in Southern California, and I thought a lot of the pool, pool men looked, you know, like they were could be surfers, you know? And I just thought, you know, let's keep it with water. And 
just thought, what's what's the best thing? And a fu- really funny story is this guy calls us after we, we put the piranha out, the, the aluminum version. This had to be like 97. He was out here in Arizona, and uh, he had a show. Oh, uh, yeah. He was a pool man. And <laughs> radio he, show. Yeah, radio show at that time. Ooh, and uh, he was a podcast. Pool, yeah, he was a pool <laughs> man, and uh, he did certain things for a uh, uh, ho- like a home show and a cable uh, show. Yeah, yeah, cable show at that time. And so uh, he calls me up and, and he says, you know, I'd really like Eric to come out because um, I just love your nets. And oh, by the way, you know, I'm a, I do fishing on the side and I was in a canal here in uh, Arizona. And guess what? I caught piranhas with the piranha. <laughs> i'm so like wait a second <laughs> there were piranhas in the canal and he's like yeah and i caught him with your piranha net <laughs> i thought he was making i never i know we don't have he had to have been joking there's no piranha here. <laughs> <laughs> no, he said his... someone dumped them in the canal i went to his yeah house. I, yeah. yeah i guess if that happened but that is <laughs> They're indigenous to like the Congo yeah, and yeah, the Amazon, yeah, yeah. Yeah. not so much. Not a local we, desert we, fish. Yeah, there are other local desert fish. Just bones. We, we get yeah. a lot of calls. Oh, that's awesome. <laughs> it's definitely a cool name, cool logo. All Thank that you. Stuff is very cool. Thank cool you. Branding. For the record, I went to his house and he showed me the piranha. I don't know where he, he swore up and down. He caught it out of the canal. So, <laughs> he had Bro, him in a that's tank. A goldfish. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty awesome. colors. Yeah, that's cool. That's super cool. All right. So how can people reach out to you guys? Well, COVID has kind of changed things for <laughs> us. Um, that was a real shocker because uh, last year uh, we did our shows January, February. We we come off, you know, March. We do a lot of shows and we come off really high <laughs> after the shows. We're like, yeah, you know, we're going to, you know, uh, get in there and, and, you know, make all the stuff and and you know have a lot of sales and that and so what changed was there's no shows so it's hard to um get in contact with your your customers your base so that was like threw a little wrench into it so i was sitting there and i was thinking you know how can i reach out to uh people uh and so we started you know on instagram and it's it's just growing and it, it's really great because it's uh, a way um that i can stay in touch with you know customers and they can see what's new what's uh coming out and it's it's just nice talking to everybody right um yeah i do have help i have uh, uh, a company that that helps me because i'm not tech savvy at all but uh but i still correspond or you know uh comment on a lot of the posts and stuff that come through so that that was the alternative uh because you know we can't do shows and who knows when we're going to get back to that right Right. well that's cool that you know you kind of maybe not so comfortable but stepped into um, social media and all those different things so that you can connect with all these people so maybe it was a blessing in disguise oh yeah yeah Yeah. Yeah. no i i really felt uh I, I love it now. I think, wow, this is this is really great. But it was uh, really out of my realm because I I'm not. Uh, well, put it this way: the the kids that that helped me, that the company that I hired, <laughs> they're like all in their twenties, and <laughs> the they kids you know, yeah. know yeah. how that <laughs> know how this stuff works. <laughs> I have no idea. Well, the cool thing is too when you're on say a podcast like this, or you're at the trade shows, and you have an understanding of social media, mm-hmm. it's going to be that much easier to stay like in contact with people. So it's like, yeah, you can reach out, send me a direct message on Instagram or Facebook or whatever. So it's like much easier because most people, especially if they're younger, spend more time there. It's like, oh, what's yeah. your email? Oh, I don't have an email. Just yeah. DM me. Yeah, because yeah, with COVID, <laughs> you, you couldn't yeah, even right. have your salespeople uh, go into the branches. Right. I mean, so it's almost like you lost contact with your customers. And I, I'm not talking about, you know, just the distribution itself, but the end user, I'm really interest, always interested in hearing uh, what the pool men have to say. 
Oh uh, yeah, yeah. You know, and we, and we pull girls. Yeah, pull show. girls. And pull yeah. girls. Can't forget them. Yes. Yeah. They're yeah, they're, they're the coming ladies. on. They're coming on bigger. Yeah, yes. they're cool. killing it. We got to make a pink net. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> <laughs> That's another thing on the honeybee list. Uh, so. <laughs> go to, we got a Home Depot right over here. I'm gonna be in the pool. Hang out for an hour. <laughs> let, me, let me join you. Go get lunch, honey. Come back. <laughs> what are you thinking, Eric? <laughs> You know what? I think this is going to be just a routine awesome. stop. <laughs> you mostly sell through distribution, but you guys also have a website, right? We do. We we sell through distribution only. Only. Yes. Yep. Mm-hmm. So I do have a lot of guys call, and unfortunately, that, that's just the best way for us. And yeah. uh, distribution does a really great job absorbing the cost on, um, like, let's say the poles and shipping. Because just to ship one pole, like let's say uh, to Texas, could be $150. Oh, wow. You know, so uh, dis- distributors do take a big hit with the shipping. And um, and it just, it, it works better for us that way, you know, to sell through them. Yeah. And it seems like, like check those, out. Yeah. It seems like one of those products that would be better if it was like, you know, uh, big volume of them going to one place where people could buy yeah. when they need it opposed to yeah. one off. Yeah, all over the country, and it's something you exactly. want to put your hands on. You know, you want to feel the net or brush exactly. or pull, and you can do that at distribution. Right. Yeah. Right. yeah that's but what, exactly. what is your website? So, I mean, they can check out the products on there. Yeah, it www.piranapoolproducts.com. Awesome, and we'll put all the links down in the notes and everything. But thank once you. again, thanks for coming oh, out. It's been a you. real Great. pleasure. We're yeah, thank you. We're real believers in the product. We we always all of our guys had <laughs> piranha poles and nets, and you know we appreciate all the hard work you've put into the product. Oh, it, thank it you. We shows. appreciate you guys, uh, not only just using our stuff. I mean, that's an honor in itself, but just what you're doing for the industry with the podcast and everything. It's, it's awesome. So and thank we you wish for, you the best really, with you know, everything. with the thank whole you. COVID thing, <laughs> yeah. we were supposed to be here in November, but we made <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> thank you. Yeah. So, you're welcome. Yeah. Thanks for having us. Hey, pool chasers. Thanks for listening. We hope you enjoyed the episode. To connect with today's guests, including pictures, links, and resources from everything discussed today, you can visit the episode page at poolchasers.com or click the links below. To connect more with us, you can find us on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter by searching at Pool Chasers. If you would like to support the podcast, the easiest and most effective way is to subscribe to the show on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, and YouTube, as well as share the show or your favorite episode with a friend or on social media. Also, you can get early access to each episode by supporting us through Patreon. We know your time is valuable, so thank you for sharing some of yours with us today. See you out there, pool chasers. chasers.